Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make the presentation to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing might do so by watching on YouTube. My name is Isaac Laluz, and with me is Ms. Atarodi, Mr. Hunt, Mr. Khan, and Mr. and, and uh, Ms. Sankar. The um, city staff moderating the platform and, and assisting us are Simon Lam, who is the Deputy Secretary Treasurer, Irving Brizraj, Sam Muzayani, and Alex Chu. The uh, participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smart smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you call on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute time and uh, all the other times your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee for Adjustment staff will share presentation submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Members of the committee of the public and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist's role if you, fa if you fail to respect these instructions. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Miti people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provision of the zoning bylaw, permission to extend or alter legal non-conforming uses, and consent to several property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today wants to receive a copy of the decision of, the, uh, of an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email only. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto local appeal body known as T-Lab or in some limited circumstances to the Toronto, to the Ontario land tri tribunal called OLT. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed the rights of third party to appeal Committee for Adjustment decisions. As of November 28, 2022, only the appellant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specific persons and public bodies under the Planning Act are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure will be as follows. I will call each item in the order listed in the, on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they, should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter directly for decision. 
each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when five minutes mark is reached. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the, at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice are, of an application are informed of the changes. Then individuals, either in support or in opposition, will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant agent has the chance to address only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken to committee for decision. Now, for this afternoon a session, members or staff, any conflict of interest to declare? There is none. Okay, so we're going to tackle the, um, the minutes have already been confirmed. We'll tackle the deferrals for this afternoon. And the first one we have is number 17. Number 17, which is 77 Ernest Avenue, application number 17. And here we have, for number 17, uh, Mr. Chair. Joyce Louvre. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, may I request we move on to the next deferral? We're not able to get a hold of the applicant at this time. Which one, the uh, Lou? Yeah. yeah. Joyce Lou, he's the, he's the applicant, huh? Yeah. So, um, are we, uh, can we go back to him later on, see if they, nope. they come back? Okay. We can try that. So we'll go to number 18, and please, when you, when you reach him, let me know so we can go back to them. Thank you. Okay, application number 18, which is 147 Bombay Avenue, application number 18. And this is, we have here, Glenn Robinoff. Mr. Robinoff, are you there? Through, through you, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do have two more deferral requests. Number 18 is not a deferral. It would be number 20 and number Yeah, yeah, 20. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah. 20, uh, the number, next one is 21, huh? Right? I, I have 20 and 21, right? Okay. So let's go to 20. Okay, let's go to 20. 20, we have uh, 43. Uh, Bennington Heights, application number 20, and here, Gloria Apostolo, Apostolo, Gloria Apostolo, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, could you please state your name and address for us, please? Perfect. My name is Gloria Apostolou, and I'm the architect and agent for 43 Bennington Heights. Okay, thank you. Could you tell us why you're asking for a deferral for this application? Uh, we would like a deferral for two reasons. The first one is that the variance list that was circulated is missing a variance for density. So there's oh. a more recent zoning notice that wasn't included. That's fine. That's and number two... Okay, that's a good one for you. I okay. think so, yeah. If you have missing variances, that's a good reason. Okay. Okay. And um, we have nobody here to speak. And uh, members, there is a, a request for deferral for item number 20, which is, uh, which is uh, 43 uh, Bennington. Could you please... Uh, if you have any question, they say they, they, they're missing variances. So please go ahead, Ms. Sankar. A motion to defer this application, signee die, to deal with the missing variances. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Second, Mr. Tarodi. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you. Okay, your, uh, your application is deferred, Sunny Dai, as requested. Thank you. Yeah, so next one is 21, huh? Two hundred and fifty seven Joyce Boulevard, application number twenty one. And here we have uh, twenty one. We've got good afternoon. Yeah, hold a second, please. We have here, yeah, we have a number. Uh, oh, it's Glenn Robinoff again, eh? Uh, <laughs> are you, are yes, you, it is. Are you here? They just told us you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, Mr. Robinoff, uh, yeah, this is regarding. Uh, 21 uh, Joyce Boulevard, right? Yes, yes. This okay. is an application. This application, we're looking to adjourn it, yeah, not yeah. defer it, yeah, just you're simply for adjourn. deferral. Yes, not deferral, adjournment. Just we, we don't want to. We don't want to proceed with this file. Oh, you don't want to proceed? Yeah, but the um, we have here. Okay, sorry. So we're, we're, withdraw we're withdrawing the application effectively. That's what we're asking. We do. Sorry, I just threw you, Mr. Chair. Sorry for interruption. Um, Mr. Rubinoff uh, made that correction because previously when he said adjourn, it means it's coming back. So he's clarified and said okay. he's withdrawing, which means after we let the yes. neighbors speak, if you're, everything is okay, we'll close the file. They will speak, but uh, my fear was that Mr. Rubinoff initially asked for an adjournment, which means it is coming back. Mr. Rubinoff. Okay, could you yeah. weigh on this here so we can call the other people who are available here? Please please tell us what's Yes, yeah, so just to be, to be absolutely clear, we're looking to withdraw this application and that's it. That's it. You're not you're not going to pursue with it anymore. Okay. All right. So we have to uh, we have to hear the other ones who came here. And uh, Mark Mark Solomon and Marlene Solomon. Are you there? Mark and Marlene Solomon. Marlene Solomon is here. Could you please, oh. could you please check your system? Okay, hold on. Uh, um, there appears to be an echo on your audio. If you could please mute the other devices that have any sort of um, sound being um, out, um, being played from it. Hello? Yeah, okay, now it's okay. Hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state your name okay, and address? I don't know what's going me. on here. Your name and your address, please. Are you still there? Okay, now, okay, I don't know. Something yeah. happened here with the your extension. Name? Okay, yes, I am here. Marlene Solomon. Okay, okay, that's, and your address? Is 259 Joycey Boulevard. Thank you. Now you heard what's happening here. The, uh, the agent is withdrawing the application, so we're not going to deal with it. So, so this is not being pursued. Thank you very much. We yeah. are very pleased. The entire street is very pleased to yeah. hear this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Alan. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Alan and Lloyd. Uh, no, Alan and Donna Lloyd. Are you there? Alan or Donna? Donna or Alan? Yes. Lloyd, yeah, okay. Could you please state your name and address? Alan and Donna Lloyd. Yes. 247 Joycey Boulevard. Thank you. You heard what's happening. They're withdrawing the application. We are very happy. Thank you. We're happy. You're happy. Thank you. Uh, Okay, Alreza Bagaricime. I don't know how you pronounce it. Bagaricime. You should be able to pronounce it properly. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks to, to the adjustment committee. 
Uh, we are very happy that the owner has uh, withdrawn his application. Okay, thank what, you. What's your address, please? Uh, 258 Joyce Boulevard. Thank you. So everybody is happy. All right. So, um, uh, so. Okay, members, we're closing the file here. They're withdrawing the application. We're closing the file. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hunt has his, his hand first to close the file. Mr. Hunt, are you okay with that? Yes. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am uh, uh, happy to uh, accommodate the applicant and uh, everyone involved and would move approval of the request to withdraw the application. Thank you. Second. Ms. Sankar, all in favor? Okay, thank you. So your application, Mr. Rubinov, your application is withdrawn as you requested. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, now. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I believe the applicant for item number 17 to be deferred has shown up. Yeah. Well, we had uh, 17. Oh, we call him back. Yeah. Okay. Okay, number 17, which is. Um... So, 17, this is uh, Joycey Liu. Are you... Joycey Liu, are you there? And then, uh... Mr. Chair and uh, and community members, uh, my name is Wick Leung. I'm uh, representing uh, actually Joyce uh, is at a meeting, so I'm representing her. That's fine. Uh, and the client, um, actually, that's, I mean, yes. So fine. my address is 2710 uh, 14 Avenue, Markham. Thank you. And so, and your name was, you said, what was your name? Rick. Rick. Rick, R-I-C-K. Rick, yeah, thank Rick. you. Thank you. Now, could you tell us the reason for the, for the request, uh, for the withdrawal request. Uh, oh, uh, not the withdrawal, we are asking for a deferral. That's what I meant, deferral, I meant, sorry. Uh, okay, okay. Because, uh, well, we need some more time to adjust the um, uh, the issue with uh, urban forestry okay. regarding to the fund. There's a, there's a big, huge uh, tree in the fund right now, so uh, we might have to shift the house back and then uh, so eliminate some of, some of the, the variances that we have right now. Okay, so you are asking for deferral to uh, to to uh, to address the questions of uh, of the um, uh, forestry and perhaps make some changes. Okay, uh, we yes. don't, we don't have any. Uh, oh, we have one more person here. Uh, Gilling Bay, are you there? Gilling Bill. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Could you please state your name Hello? and address? Um, my name is Gui Ding Bai. I live in 75 Ernest Avenue. Your, your, your address is 75 Ernest? Okay. And yes, 75 Ernest. Okay. And you heard where, uh, do you have any problem with the deferral here? Uh, yes, uh, I, I, Object the application for two main reasons. The first is the virus, the side yard um, virus, the side bank, especially in vice side, is uh, supposed to 1.8. Uh, the protocol not, applies. Excuse me, excuse me. All we're discussing now is the deferral. If we defer it, we're not going to discuss. Okay. We're not going to discuss it today. Yeah. Okay. I see. Um. I. That's okay. Okay. All right, thank you, because when it comes back later on, you will be invited. Okay. And you can discuss at that time, we'll discuss the application, if we defer it. So so as long as okay. you no problem with the deferral. Okay, members, uh, the, we, there's a request for deferral in order to make, to, to address concerns of uh, forestry and uh, trees and all that stuff. So can I have a motion then, please? Ms. Atarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to defer this application, sign it so that the applicant can uh, 
have enough time to address the uh, the urban forestry concern and, and also revise the plan um, accordingly. Thank you. Second. Ms. Sankar seconding, all in favor? Thank you. Okay, unanimously. Uh, sir, your application is deferred sign a die and check when the, when the staff okay. when it's coming back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So that's number 17 and 21. Uh, 20, We have uh, 18 as well, right? Is 18 already to be uh, deferred? No. I had number 18 here in the list. Yeah, number 18, Mr. Chair. Okay, so so just number 18 now. Huh? Okay, I had it re uh, registered as, uh, as deferral. Okay, we are on number 18 which is uh, 147 Bombay Avenue. Uh, Hi, good afternoon. And, oh, Mr. Robinoff again, okay. Hi. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is not, an, this application is not a deferral. It's just a regular no, no, application. Yeah we, know, yeah, we know that, okay. For some reason he was here at number 18. Okay, so uh, what do we have here? We have, um, uh, you're the only one, there is, no, there is no other person to speak. So could you please just give a very, this is a, uh, an addition with three, uh, three variances. And there is some letters of support, I say two, maybe the 50, I don't know. So um, could, you, could you please make, yeah. make a short presentation? Sure, thank you. It's um, uh, yeah, this is an application for a rear and a side second story addition um, over the uh, garage. So the variances before you uh, are uh, we're building in line on on the one side with the existing house. So it's the variances for a side yard setback for the existing house and also the uh, small extension on the back. So that's variance number two at 0 0.46. Uh, variance number one is related to an existing shed in the backyard, which is to be maintained. They just reduced the size of it, but because it's an existing shed in an existing location, uh, it's, if you want to zoom in on it, uh, uh, it's just a small uh, um, uh, holding pool equipment effectively. So uh, that's what the variance for the var first variance is for that shed. The second variance is for the right hand side, side yard setback where it built in line. And the uh, extension on top of the garage is the third variance, which is related to just building on top at 0 0.7 uh, meters setback. Um, so uh, again, that's the um, building on existing wall. So the existing wall and the proposed addition on top uh, is for that variance number three. Um, so it's, um, I believe this is a relatively minor addition. Um, it, it, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, they spoke with uh, the neighbors and planning department had no concerns expressed on this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Members, there is nobody else to speak. Any question? No? Can I have a motion then, please? Okay, please go ahead. Ms. Uh, Ms. To you, Mr. Yes. To you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with no condition. Thank, Thank you. you. Second. Mr. Hunt seconding. All in favor? Okay, that's the only people I have, three. The other one is not available. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, Ms. Sankar. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, unanimous, huh? Okay? Are you are you're for it too, right? Okay. You heard what's happening, huh? 
Ms. Sankar, you heard what's happening here? The... Yes, I heard the whole thing. I'm not Thank sure you. why my video kept going in and out. So I'm for it. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. So unanimous. Okay, Mr. Robinoff, your application is unanimously approved and there is no conditions. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good you. afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Application number 19. Application number 19, which is uh, 31, Ellen Hale, application number 19. And here we have Amanda Wunfat and Rini Wunfat. Are you there? Yes. Can you hear us? Yes. Sure. Could you please tell us your name and your address? Yep. So my name is Amanda Wunfat, uh, maiden name Chung Tan Wing, which is on the application. Address 31 Ellen Hill Drive. Thank you. So we have, um, yeah, there is a second uh, story, second story addition, eight variances. Could you please make a presentation and tell us what the merit of this application is? Sure. So this is a second story addition, which is just to build above our existing house structure. Um, so of the variances, the, the first one is related to a slight overhang for the second story addition, mainly just to build bay windows for uh, uh, to kind of retain the character and design of the house, not to kind of be a flat front structure. The other remaining variances are all related to um, either the existing open porch. So I think four, five, six, seven are all related to the existing open porch uh, on our current house. And the, uh, the two side yard variances, there will be a slight change to add a gutter system around the new second story addition. Um, uh, very minor variance to change the, the side yard setback from the existing. Are you finished? Yeah. Yes, that's all. Okay. Yes. Uh, you, uh, you're not changing anything, are you? No. No. Okay. And we've already had discussions with our neighbors and okay. shared all the plans. Okay. Thank They're you. They're all in support. Okay, members, there is nobody else registered here. Any question? If not, can I have a motion then, please? Mr. Khan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, eight variances, all straightforward, minor, and therefore I move this application be approved. Thank you. Second, Mr. Hunt seconding, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. So your application is unanimously approved and there is no conditions. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Application number 21, which is 257 Joyce Boulevard. Application. Huh? 21 was different. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's the one different. Five five one Mount Pleasant Road, application number twenty two. And here we have Vladimir Nickel and David Brownscale. Which one is talking? Sure. Sorry? It's it's Valdemar Nickel. And I have with me today my friend. Mr. David Bronskill as well. Okay. I'm a planner with Nor Architects on behalf of the ownership. Okay, so who wants to speak, Mr. Bronskill? I will begin with a very quick uh, summary, and perhaps Mr. Bronskill will also uh, chime in. Uh, we left off uh, last month uh, discussing the um, legal, lawful, non conforming use in this minor expansion. To, uh, to a very exciting project, a cultural uh, redevelopment of a theater, the Regent Theater at 551. And um, since, uh, just to clarify, uh, we've met with the residents many times, 
we have uh, filed for site plan approval and are actually in our second round of uh, uh, site plan review comments and all of the technical matters uh, are being reviewed by city staff. And uh, so perhaps rather than going through uh, the details of the um, performance standards, uh, we can perhaps uh, go back to committee, see if there's any questions and then answer those specific questions rather than speaking in generalities, if that's acceptable. Mr. Bronskill? And Mr. Chair, it's David Bronskill, and just for the record, I'll give you my address quickly, 333 Bay Street, Suite 3400, Toronto, Ontario. Um, here also as agent for the applicant. Um, Mr. Chair, the, the one thing I would add, and I know you heard some of the presentation last time and also speakers last time uh, before there was the deferral, I just want to indicate our thanks to uh, committee staff for assisting with that deferral. You will notice on this public hearing notice the addition of the variance related to the extension of the legal non-conforming use that was not on the notice last time. Uh, and so it was a worthwhile deferral. Um, I'm just going to add, Mr. Chair, one quick point on that because there was a presentation last time from a resident about us having an onus to the committee to establish the legal non-conforming use. I just wanted to note for the committee, that's not what's before you. Um, it's the variance and it's the extension of the legal non-conforming use. The um, evidence and proof of the existing non-conforming use is in fact a determination of the city's buildings department. And there has been extensive dialogue with the city's buildings department about this. There was initially a zoning notice that in fact identified a use variance. Through subsequent discussions, building staff indicated that that was incorrect, that in fact it should be this variance that's before you under 45 to a i i e the extension of the legal non-conforming use so buildings has made that determination and if there's any uh question from our side about whether that determination is correct or not and, and we don't think there is it's actually the divisional court who would have to decide that through a building permit application so i just i, I didn't want to spend any more time on that mr chair than that because um putting evidence in front of this committee as to whether the use is in fact legal non-conforming or not is not something within your jurisdiction. Um, but I just wanted to note that that variance is there as part of the other variances you would have previously seen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay, just uh, just uh, going back a minute here. Um, when you said last time we said it, by the way, the committee who's deciding today, I'm not sure if the same members were last time. All we know that is in front of us there is an application 22, which has this here, tether and three-story addition. So if you make your yes. presentation of five minutes, we have here a bunch of people, I mean a bunch of a list. We have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people who want to speak to this application. So if you're through with your presentation, then we can move to the, uh, to the neighbors. So... Mr. Mr. Chair, your presentation material in front of the key from Mr. Nichol could go through that for you, but we are. We're losing you. <laughs> Sir, we lost you. Right. Mr. Chair, I'll just jump in. Uh, we have the material in front of you and we're happy to go through it, but what we're suggesting is in the interest of time, uh, we can uh, answer specific questions or attributes that uh, come through committee uh, or, or uh, responding to the residents uh, specifically. Anyways, this is not the way we do it. If you, it's up to you, you have a five minutes, you want to use it, fine, you don't want to use it. We'll move on to this. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll just go through it at a very high level then. If I can ask staff to bring up the uh, material uh, just very quickly so that uh, everyone is versed. Uh, with the application in front of committee today. Thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members and staff. Are we able to uh, put the um, package on the screen? Well, the, the staff is trying to put it up. Yes, thank you, sir. 
In, in the interim, I will begin uh, just uh, very quickly. The Regent Theatre has been a uh, cultural hub performance theatre uh, for over 100 years, and it's uh, operated as a uh, theatre and cinema uh, since its inception. It's had various different uh, modifications over the past 100 years, and we're here in front of you on a very exciting proposal is to completely restore and renovate this heritage building into a new modern performance facility uh, on, on Mount Pleasant. So it's a, it's a very unique and exciting uh, proposal. The uh, proposal in front of you has existed for 100 years. And as uh, my friend has stated, it is a legal, lawful, non-conforming use because the use continued uh, uninterrupted. And the zoning bylaw that came in 2013, um, you know, it, 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 uh, the use was there prior to the enactment of the zoning bylaw. And so with this renovation and restoration of the theater uh, into modern day standards, uh, we are providing a small uh, uh, three-story addition to the rear, which is at the east end of the site. Uh, on on Hadley, which is right now a vacant piece of uh, of the parcel, uh, it is a, a small uh, three story addition. Uh, I think it's approximately uh, one thousand uh, one thousand uh, square uh, square uh, meters, and it's uh, three stories. And there's a series of um, housekeeping minor variances that go to clean up and legalize some of the legal lawful non conforming of the existing building, and uh, some of them also pertain in terms of uh, height and a little bit of setback and green space before the new addition uh, that falls within uh, the residential area. So staff, if we can maybe just scroll down very quickly uh, to the uh, graphics package, uh, that is uh, not in my cover letter, but that is the separate, uh, separate, uh, uh, yes, the, uh, yes, thank you the plans there. And I can very quickly scroll through that and illustrate some of the uh, what's being proposed, restoration of the facade. And on the next slide, you see the small little addition of highlighted in red. And uh, if we continue scrolling through the graphics material, uh, that's just the detail and the illustration of the uh, zoning line. And if we continue scrolling down, uh, so this is a as of right permitted use uh, that is some of the plan and of course the addition is simply to include and it's it's uh, has an enclosed uh, shipping area so that noise is contained inside and as with theaters noise is a very important matter uh, and so therefore every measure is made for sound attenuation for any rooftop units uh, from a massing and volume distribution perspective the rear addition is sloped and has a very residential vernacular to it, uh, and it is even inset. So every effort has been made uh, to keep all uh, everything within the site. If we continue scrolling down just in the next uh, minute, just so committee can see. And, and uh, these are some of the examples of uh, if, if setbacks were applied, the theater could not exist in, in and of itself. Um, so if we'll continue to scroll down, through all of the slides, please. And as I've mentioned, we are under site plan control. We see the conditions uh, that um, uh, forestry and heritage have uh, suggested. And uh, certainly we are, I believe, July 13th, sitting in front of Toronto Preservation Board. Uh, so uh, we are uh, uh, working well with city staff and we're very pleased to entertain any questions. And based on the summary, uh, I certainly believe uh, that the variances uh, are minor in nature, desirable, and certainly conform to the intent of the zoning bylaw, official plan, and are certainly desirable for the city and the community as a whole. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, you'll uh, stay tuned until we hear the, uh, the, the, the neighbors. And after that, we'll come back to you and Mr. Bronskill, and we'll see what the answer is, okay? So the first one we have here. Thank you. Thank you.
the first one here, we have a, a Stanislav Rafilovich, are you there? Stanislav Ravilovich. Hello? Yeah, hi. Could you please state your name and address? Yes, uh, my name is Stanislav Ravilovich. I am from Pune, Adler Road. Okay. So, uh, could you please tell us what's your concern about this application? Uh, okay, if we go into the page, first of all, to page number two. Uh, this, sir, uh, sir, uh, you're, uh, sir, you're cutting off. Could you please speak slowly and clearly because it, your, your system is cutting off? I see. Okay. So let's okay. See. okay. So, on the plan, page number two, on the north side, it looks like empty lot, but it's a house there. Where is the additional? Uh, it's just from the plan, yes? On the north of the proposal, it's a uh, lot. It looks like empty, but it's out on there. Mr. Ravilovich, we'd we'll like to help you out because we're not getting anything you're saying here because you're cutting off. Speak slowly, and think if you have a problem, we can call you back because we, uh, we, we want to help you out and we don't hear what you're saying. Okay. I don't know. After all, the building will be too high. It's 16 meters. Um, it's, it's just a lot for small uh, family oriented streets. It's just huge building it will be facing the Hadley Road with access for trucks to load and unload equipment for theater use. Um, so it just it's just too much. I have like many things to to add. Uh, okay, what what I hear is uh, is too much. We heard that, so we're going to do the best we can because we'll we'll pick up whatever we understand from your conversation, unless you want to try again to speak very clearly and see what you got okay, in your system will, there. So, something in your system. Can, can you come back to me? I will try to adjust my system. Okay. Uh, see what you can do in your system. In the meantime, we'll move to the next one, who's Andy Wilson. Are you there? Yeah, thank you. Andy Wilson. Mr. Wilson, are you there? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, please, your name and address, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Andy Wilson, 41 Hadley Road. Thank you. And what's your concern here? The big issue here is a developer and city council amendment and official plan amendment. They're doing so as they believe passing these off as minor variances is a more expedient process for them. They're forcing a structure and planned use into a residential neighborhood and community that's unprecedented in the area, highly disruptive, plainly doesn't fit its surroundings, and that infrastructure in the immediate neighborhood isn't designed or intended for. The many failings of acceptable minor uh, variants or expansion of continued use, uh, le legal non-conforming use arguments are set out in our and others written submissions. Precedents and case law in this area set a very high standard for examination of and approval for this application, particularly given both overwhelming intensification from any pre-existing use and a requirement, quoting the Supreme Court of Canada, to balance the landowner's interests against the community interests, taking into account the nature of the pre-existing use, the degree of remoteness, and the new or aggravated neighborhood effects. Despite developer council's wish to keep the committee away from this issue, the balancing of interest considerations are very much in the purview of the committee to consider in these proceedings. Dropping 200 seats from the theater reduces its entertainment place of assembly element by 25%. In fact, the entire expansion on the property zoned residential is for uses other than entertainment place of assembly very remote from pre-existing use and fundamentally unnecessary. In a meeting with neighbors Monday night, the developer admitted its planned commit 
uh, contemplates the theater's use as a dinner theater cabaret. Following the Parker v. City of Toronto OMB decision mentioned in our written submission, this constitutes a change of use for a movie theater, eliminating any legal non-conforming use argument for these residential lots. Pictures and descriptions of the neighborhood in our and others' written submissions make it obvious a rear structure equivalent to five residential stories, not three, compared to surrounding properties, for the most part, one or two stories, with enormous deficiencies in setback, floor area space, soft landscaping, and many other zoning requirements are massive new or aggravated neighborhood effects. Artist renderings show the lack of fit into the Hadley streetscape and community. Despite the dearth of meaningful studies examining them, the obvious new or aggravated neighborhood effects discussed in many written submissions are very significant and no plan has been presented to ameliorate, offset, or manage them. The benefits for community interest arguments are meager. This appears to be a vanity project by Winnipeg-based Walter Schroeder, who the Globe and Mail describes having sold the debt rating agency DBRS in 2014 for US $500 million, quotes him as impressed by the culture, resourcefulness, and humor of Newfoundlanders during 30 plus years that I was traveling to and involved in the credit rating of Newfoundland and outlined his vision of building a company which would create a musical, one which could tell some of the true stories of Newfoundland, positioned, um, positioned as Schroeder's philanthropic gift to Toronto. It's clearly instead of philanthropic gift to Newfoundland. The same article states the space is crucial to the company's business plan, which for now involves rehearsing an openly modest the review budgeted new review musicals and jukebox musicals with eight to 12 actor casts in Newfoundland where production costs are cheaper before bringing them to this country's biggest city where they can attempt to earn their investment back. The gift to Toronto is indeed the task to be a cash machine recouping our money spent in Newfoundland. This all miserably fails any comparison between the costs and benefits to the community. No grounds exist for the committee to consider the requested variance as minor. Instead, what's needed are zoning and official plan amendments, and that power rests with the City Council. Were such amendments proposed, we would support them, were they instead made to the bell size property, the developer properties the developer has purchased that already abut the region to the north and the, a laneway and other commercial properties and infrastructure to the west. I discussed this option after the April 13th Terra Bruce community meeting with Bob Hallett, its COO. He told me his initial preference was building on the bell size property bordering the laneway, but the city told him it, this was a harder proposal to get approved and to go with plan, the plan for building back to Hadley. Our city councillor at the April 13th community meeting fear-mongered the specter of a 25-plus story sir, condo on the Sir, we'll ask you to summarize. You're getting close to your five minutes, please. In, a, in an email to me, she hides behind this committee stating the Committee of Adjustment is an independent quasi-judicial body. They will make the final decision on this application and not see counsel. With the city holding the committee up as not just taking its word on things, please examine carefully and with somewhat jaundiced eyes the things you are in too many cases are not presented by the committee on city on the matter. Thank you. Uh, any question for this speaker? Okay. The next one is Amir Shapira. Amir Shapira, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state your name and address for us, please? Amir Shapira, 213 Bellsize Drive. Thank you. Any, uh, could you tell us what's your, what's your uh, concern? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, just uh, want to add that I'm looking, I'm looking at about um, a bit less than 60 meters from the back uh, of the theater. Um, and I do have an issue with the size of what uh, um, the architect mentioned, no architect, uh, a three-story uh, addition to the back. Uh, in reality, the three stories was mentioned before, is six, uh, 16 meters, if I'm not mistaken, which is more than a residential three-meter high uh, house. Now, along the street and all the street around, um, this, the height of the properties are a maximum of 10 meters. Extending the back to 16 meters will impact uh, our street bell size and the surrounding. And this is my main issue, along with an issue related to the traffic um, that we'll face from doubling the size of the theater. 
uh, including parking issues that uh, is was not addressed in this application. So this is uh, the only point I would like to raise. Okay, that's it. That's it to me. Oh, thank you. That's very that's very sharp and short. Um, yeah, any question for the speaker? Thank you, sir. Uh, Blair Wilson. Hello, Mr. Chair. Yeah. B can you Hello, Mr. Chair. It's Blair Wilson. Wilson. Yes, thank you. And what's, uh, what's your address? Thank you. It's uh, 27 Hadley Road. Okay, thank you. Anything, anything new? We hear, we hear lots about this. So, could you tell us what's, uh, what's your concern? Uh, speak about uh, related to, to whether or not the proposal is desirable for the appropriate development and ultimately uh, or use of the of the land, and ultimately whether the development as proposed will cause unacceptable impact to the community. I'd like to talk about specifically parking and community safety. Um, the street the, that uh, I, I'm on Hadley Road, and so the, the, the proposal is to put the, uh, the theater um, on Mount Pleasant coming all the way back to our street. And we, with respect to parking, we know that parking is an issue. To a certain degree, that's just life in the big city. It's, t it's tough to find parking spots. Um, and it's no different here. Um, we're we're a res residential community, and we're not designed for uh, for the volume of, of extra vehicles that are, are likely to be coming through as a result of a, the building of the this size of a theater. Um, I would note that as part of the site approval application, there was a report submitted entitled Urban Transportation Considerations, and that included a review of the area street network and area public parking. And that sounds wonderful uh, because it says within a 500 meter radius of the site, the new theater, there is an estimated public parking supply of 1,310 spaces. And, and that obviously sounds terrific and more than ample in terms of allowing the number of uh, cars to come to transport theater goers. It sounds good, but it's simply, it's just not true. Uh, the majority of those on-street on parking spaces are already accounted for by on-street uh, permits. And I know I, I have one. Um, I can tell you that on, I knew going into it that on our street, there are no public parking uh, spots available because they're all taken up by permits. And I spoke with the city today uh, and I, I looked at uh, just three streets uh, uh, that, within the area that their, um, their consultant proposed. And th these streets would account for about 100 different parking spots. And the city tells me that less than 10 spots would be available. Uh, to to non permit holders, so less than ten percent of what they told us would be available for public parking uh, would actually be available, and and that is in the best of times. Um, it, it, in the summer, in the fall, in the spring, if you, once we get into the winter, the, the the difficulty with parking gets even worse because the plows push snow over to the sides of the street and take up parking spots. So uh, again, with the, this area is residential; it's it's not designed for the volume of of extra vehicles. Um, I also want to talk a little bit um, and more specifically from the heart on this one. This is uh, with respect to, to public safety. Um, at the end of the street, of uh, end of Hadley, right at Bell Size, which is uh, very close to, it's a, a stone throw away from the proposed uh, site, there's a daycare. And so you've got over 100 kids uh, that are coming and going from that uh, daycare every day. Uh, the, and their young parents are picking them up at, right at the end of the workday five, you know, six o'clock, something like that. And already uh, the parking is untenable. They're parking on both sides of the street just to pick up their kids. And that would be right at the same time that any theater goers uh, would be arriving at the, th at, at the theater. Uh, so with, not only would there not be av uh, availability for parking, but the increased vehicular traffic uh, is gonna be uh, putting people at risk. And specifically on our street, would also point out, and this is a, a, from a letter that was written to our city councillor from the parents of, uh, of a 20-year-old boy who lives on our street, and he has autism. Um, they've already had to, to move once from a slightly busier street, which turns out to be Bell-Size, um, to the, uh, the small street 
uh, of Hadley Road, which where we are, and, and this gentleman is known to all of us. Uh, he is safe in our area and he has the confidence to move about freely. If, in fact, the proposal goes forth to allow a commercial loading dock to be put on right at the at the street front on Hadley Road, that's going to increase, uh, significantly increase the risk, uh, not only for him, but for everybody else uh, with the increased uh, volume of, of a lar larger commercial trucks coming in and out uh, from a residential neighborhood. I would also note uh, that, um, funnily enough, I want to come back to parking. For some, uh, and I don't know how this works, but um, there was already work being done on the that uh, that's on the the proposed site today, uh, and the the workers had taken up two <laughs> spots uh, with 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 their trucks. So I don't know if they're allowed to do that, but it's Sir, I guess that's just please, part of the whole. Can you please summarize? We're getting closer here. I, I can. And we have. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we have. Thank you, Chairman, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, any question for this gentleman? Mr. David Hurst, are you there? Good afternoon, committee of adjustment members, honorable chair. I'm David Hirsch. Uh, I'd ask the staff to uh, you're, you're put right, up the. Excuse me, we have to record. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to record this. Could yeah. you please state your address, please? Of course. It's 23 Hadley Road. Okay. So, anything different, please yeah. tell us what's your concern. And just a. Uh, of course. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I asked the staff to put up the um, information that I had uh, uh, provided to the committee. Uh, as part of my submission, please. Thank you. Uh, while we are uh, waiting for that, I'd like to have a, make a few other comments. Um, I heard the proponents' representatives say that they are completely restoring the Heritage Building. Um, this is simply not true. This, this is not the Regent Revival, which would, which would, in fact, restore an historic and beautiful building. Instead, it's a magical maneuver. It's been deliberately cast in the shadows by both the applicant and a politician with extraordinary powers <clears throat> who refuses to meet with her constituents about this. The, almost the entire landmark building is to be demolished, save for the facade and some interior features to, re to be uh, reinstalled uh, in the new structure. Um, I would like to comment on the uh, uh, proponents' evasiveness on this issue. It is unacceptable. We met with the proponents' representatives uh, just this week for the first time. It has not been numerous times that's been suggested. Um, the proponent uh, refuses to adjust anything on the plan despite the community's willingness to work with the proponent to create an acceptable solution to their problems. Um, the, uh, the proponent indicated they were very um, confident that the committee would be approving the proposal and they already have construction equipment on the site doing further soil testing. Speaking of which, it turns out that the soil uh, underneath the theater is, has a high water table. Uh, they would not be able to, or are not willing to, install any additional levels of underground parking or underground facilities due to uh, severe cost increases in the construction of a raft slab at a, a point load, a well point to watering system. Uh, the building is going to be 56 feet tall, by the way, uh, as against 33 feet tall for all the buildings. My job today is to show you that this is not an application that is minor in nature. As you can see from what the slides has been put up on the screen, most of the variances are exceeding the uh, standards uh, required by the bylaw by 100% up to 350% as it, as it relates to the gross floor area of the building. This is an unacceptable impact on the uh, neighborhood uh, and on the streetscape. It will uh, destabilize the neighborhood completely. Um, the councillor has been unsupportive of her constituents. The councillor has, has uh, um, tried to persuade residents through threatening that this could be a 10 or 20 story condominium building, which is bizarre. It would be preposterous under any city ordinance. It is absolutely misleading to call this a restoration, it is largely a new building. There are, it has been, uh, as I said earlier, very opaque and evasive uh, application. The uh, 
uh, reports uh, supporting the site plan application. Uh, the location of those reports were only disclosed to us this last Tuesday, where we were, some of us were able to read through some of them. The committee certainly wouldn't have been expected to read through the literally thousands of pages that the reports uh, in, uh, in, um, are, uh, are addressing. The neighborhood is really in a very bad position with respect to this project. Not only has it got an unacceptable impact, is unsafe and unsightly, they have, the applicant has put the neighborhood into a lose-lose situation. Should this committee decide to decline these uh, so-called minor variances, which are, as you can see, hardly a minor at all, the applicant will no doubt refer the project to the T-Lab uh, tribunal. This is a very expensive procedure. However, the applicant obviously has a ton of money and can go forward as they wish. Should the committee approve the application today, the residents will be in a position where a building that is totally unsuited and, un and will uh, basically wreck our street, uh, cause untold parking problems and safety situations will be built. I would ask that the committee defer this matter for a period of time to allow residents and the developer to meet on a number of occasions it to see if a, if a solution can be worked out to the project. Otherwise, I would ask the committee to uh, decline the application and we will uh, have to uh, see about funding for a, an appeal made by the applicant. Okay. Thank you very much for your Thank you. That's it. Any question for the I'm open. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is Patrick Harrison. Harrington. Patrick Harrington. Okay, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state your name and address? It's Patrick Harrington. I'm a lawyer with Ayrton Burles, 181 Bay Street in Toronto. Thank you. Now, uh, you heard a lot of things, repeating the same thing. Try to give us something different rather than what you heard. If you want to repeat it, fine. It's your five minutes. But to, to, be, you know, to be more effective, tell us what you, what's, what's, what's your concern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And if I could ask staff to put up the applicant's plans, the last page of the applicant's plans, the proposed rear perspective. It's on PDF page 22 of the applicant's plans. Mr. Chair, this is an application to enlarge and extend an existing legal non-conforming structure pursuant to 452A1. There's also a proposal to add or modify the existing uses within the building to include community gathering, functioning, meeting space. You heard one of the applicants talk about a cabaret. And most of these new uses are going to be deployed on the residential side of the two zoning lots. Now, typically, this committee would be tasked with applying the four parts or four part test of a minor variance. But when you're dealing with the expansion of a legal non-conforming use, that test collapses into two parts. Does the proposed physical expansion and do the new uses represent appropriate development of the lot, in particular the affected portion which sits in the residential designation and zone? And would the expansion and new uses cause unacceptable impacts within the affected neighborhood? Now, I'm not going to repeat the uh, unacceptable impacts that are being attested to by some of the neighbors who are speaking to things like impact parking, loading, uh, what they'll see on their street. By my count, you have about 12 letters of objection on file. The common thread amongst those letters of objections, they're coming from the owners all along Hadley, which is the residential street that'll be faced with what you see in the picture right there. They're generally not opposed to the concept of revising the Regent Theater. They largely support it, in fact, but their comments are focused on the physical presence and the increased use of the building that extends into their neighborhood. The letters in support you have appear to primarily come from members of the public who are involved in the theater arts in Toronto. I'd like to remind the committee you are not tasked with deciding whether or not the revitalization of this theater is a good thing and the uh, refusal or deferral of this application will not spell doom for this theater. What it will allow the applicant to do is better address the concerns that have been brought by this community on a number of occasions. For the balance of my time, I'd like to look at the test of appropriate development of the lot. The fact that this is an existing structure that is built within the residential zone is not a blank check 
to develop whatever they want. The starting point, in fact, at law for legal non-confusers is, is that they're going to phase out over time. The concept of legal non-conformity is supposed to be a shield, not a sword. I would submit that what's in the, on the page in front of you is most definitely being used as a sword. The zoning restrictions in the residential category are not directly applicable because it is a legal non-conforming use, but in my submission, they do set an appropriate touchstone for assessing what is appropriate development, especially in a neighborhood that is largely built out in conformity with those zoning restrictions. So what are some of the restrictions that they're being asked to be departed from here? Uh, 7.5 side, uh, side yard setback is being reduced to zero. A maximum height of 10 meters is being increased to 16 meters, and we heard the applicant repeatedly say this is a three-story addition. That is three commercial stories with interior heights ranging from 12 feet all the way up to 16 feet plus a rooftop mechanical. The FSI is going from 0.6 to 2.0. The minimum rear yard setback to the street, which is Hadley Street, is being decreased from 7.5 to 5.7, which brings the height and mass further into the residential streetscape. What you are creating, as you see there, is the tallest, it's the biggest, it's the closest. As well, there's usually a minimum of 5.5 meter setback when you have windows in the building. You're going to have a glazed third story, a brand new third story glazed at a zero setback with the lot lines. And as shown in the developer's pictures, it does not conform to the 45 degree angular plane, which is going to affect how the Hadley residents see the sky from the sidewalks and from their homes. I'd ask this committee to pause for a moment and think. If I came here today with a residential single family dwelling proposal that looked like what you had on the screen with all those departures I just listed, I put it to you that you would not find that that represents appropriate development of the lot. And so I would ask that you find that this too does not represent appropriate development of the lot. I'm not saying that the residential zoning category directly applies to this structure. What I'm saying that a balance needs to be acquired here. And this is not balance. What this is, is extending the commercial zone all the way into Hadley Street. Only city council has the power to do that. And it's inappropriate for this applicant to ask the committee to extend its powers over zoning to provide that level of relief and impact to this community. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Those are my comments. Thank you. Any question for this uh, speaker? Okay. The next one is Lisa Taylor. Lisa Taylor, are you there? Through you, Mr. Chair, Lisa has been unmuted. She can speak. She's unmuted. Lisa Taylor. Sorry, I'm not going to be able to speak at this time. Okay, thank you. We'll move on. Margaret Thompson, are you there? Hear me? Mar yeah, could you please state your name and address for us? My name is Margaret Thompson. My address is 21 Hadley Road. I live directly across from the proposed expansion thank of this theater. You. Okay, thank you. Anything different from what we heard? We heard a lot here today. Do you have anything different or do you want to repeat the same thing? <clears throat> in general, I have the same feelings as all of my neighbors and friends and Mr. Harrington as to the objections that they have to this proposed expansion of the theater. Um, I would also note that the um, urban forestry has suggested that this application be denied as the um, as they will be deter they will be taking down five viable um, trees that are on city property and we'll have no plans to replace trees. This will affect our community significantly. Um, as no longer will we have shade and coolness um, because of the loss of these trees with no plans to replace them. Um, I will not um, expand any further as I don't want to waste the committee's time. I thank you for your attention and uh, wonder if you have any questions. Thank you. That was very nice of you and short and, and to the point. Um, any question for this speaker? <clears throat> okay, so the next one is Christoph Hassmann, are you there? Christoph Hassmann. Members of the committee. Hi, could you state your name? Can you hear me? Yeah, your name and address. Yes, my name is Christoph. 
Yeah, Christoph Hausmann. I live at 215 Bell Size Drive, uh, which is immediately, if you look at Hadley uh, Street, it, if you follow it straight down, you'll run into my house. Um, so I'm very near to the proposed development. And uh, I wish to uh, basically support what others have said with respect to the zoning variances being inappropriate and far more than minor, the extension of the height of the building and the traffic problems, uh, parking spaces, uh, the legal non-conforming use aspects, as Mr. Harrington has, has spelled out, uh, and, the, and the loss of trees. In addition, I would like to simply say that I would encourage the committee not to be to fall victim to the subterfuge of this application, which really uh, is unclear at this point in time. It's an application for minor variances on a, on, on a particular property. However, the owner of that property, the, the principles behind it, also have purchased uh, properties along Bellside Drive immediately adjacent to this bill, to this property, numbers 176 through 186 Bellside Drive. It raises a lot of questions about what is being proposed here in the long run by the applicant. Um, and it certainly, as you can understand, surely, would raise the questions and, and the doubts and the concerns of the neighborhood. Um, what should we expect here? You're proposing to build uh, a, a theater or renovate a theater. In fact, you're ex substantially expanding and rebuilding a theater. And on top of that, you're, you're, you're acquiring adjacent properties, which raises all kinds of unheard questions. So I would simply urge the committee not to fall, to, to fall victim to this subterfuge and to let itself, in some respects, although I know it's beyond your scope of, of, of uh, authority, but do not allow the planning process of the City of Toronto to uh, fall victim to this uh, kind of a ruse. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any question? Okay, so let's get back the, uh, the agent and see what they have to say. Um, could we get back uh, Mr. Bronskale and, uh, Vla and, and Vladimir uh, Nichols, please? Could you come back and, and address those concerns and tell us where you want to move from here? Hello, Mr. Chair. It's Mr. Bronsko. Can you hear me all right? Yes, please go ahead. Um, yes, I'm just going to start, well. sir, Thank with you. just a few clarifications, um, and then I may turn it to my friend, Mr. Nichol, to, to pick up things that I've missed. Okay, we're listening. Through you, David. Sorry, Mr. Chair. I, I think my internet cycled out. Can you hear me all right? Now we hear you, yeah. I apologize for my, I think it may be my modem doing interruptions every now and then. That's so I apologize. We're familiar with the. Uh, if it, Okay, Thank you, sir. Yeah, you. Um, first, sir, urban forestry is not recommending refusal. No. Uh, I know one of the speakers said that to you. There are, and and this just may be the confusion in how those memos read, sir. There are two recommended conditions of approval. We obviously have no concern with forestry conditions being recommended for refusal uh, of, uh, on any approval, sir. That there's no recommendation for refusal from urban forestry. Secondly, sir. Um, there, is, there are tons of material as part of the site plan application, absolutely. Um, they've been available for some time on the city's AIC website. Um, and sir, those have been exhaustively reviewed by city staff, the professionals who look at these various matters, including sir, transportation, safety, access, parking, loading, heritage, and planning, sir. And not only, sir, are there no concerns, but there is support. And I'd urge the committee to rely on City of Toronto staff as part of that review. There was reference to the transportation study as an example, sir. Um, the transportation study didn't rely only on on-site parking. It relied in fact upon the extensive green P parking that's in the area. And I would simply note for the committee, there is no parking variance before you in fact, for this proposed use. There were some comments about the loading, sir. It's an enclosed space. 
It's not a commercial loading spacer the way we think of it. Uh, it's there for garbage and deliveries. It's infrequently used. Um, there's no safety issue, sir, with uh, one truck maybe once a day accessing the site and using a totally enclosed loading space. Um, there were some assertions to you, sir, about the legal non-conforming use. And with respect, sir, those assertions were wrong. There is an, a provision in the Planning Act that is specifically being used for what's before you for an extension or expansion of a legal non-conforming use. So to, to, to suggest to you, sir, that the use must end is for actually incorrect. And we're using the appropriate mechanism for the expansion of that. It was also suggested to you, sir, in that same submission that the cabaret space, the dinner space, the lounge space is all being put in the residential area. That's incorrect, sir. That space is front of house and it's clear on the plans. Back of house on the various plans includes office space, it includes the loading space, and it includes what's a rehearsal space, sir. Um, so there isn't, sir, somehow this notion of a back door to a cabaret lounge, as was, I think, implied. That's front of house. There was a suggestion, sir, that you should take into account potential expansion on other properties. There is no proposed expansion on other properties. And I would urge the city, uh, the Committee of Adjustment not to fall victim to innuendo and assertions on things like that. Um, and, and so, sir, overall, a lot of those assertions, frankly, weren't based on the facts that are before you. And so I just, in the remaining time I have, just want to back up for a moment. We have an entertainment use. There is no doubt that it's an existing use and it's legal non-conforming on the residential zone at the rear. That use is being proposed to be expanded with a three-story, yes, commercial structure, sir, but on the plans you will see tapers down to just, just, sir, over nine meters at the rear. It is set back, sir, more than the house next to it, and that's clear on the plan, sir, and in the model that's in front of you. And it's sloping roof, sir. It's not a big box to the rear. It's, in fact, an elegantly designed extension of this fantastic existing community theater use. I think the committee is well aware of how people want the Regent Park to be used again. And this proposal is the path to ensure that that will be done. There was also some suggestions, sir, made to you that the commercial zone is being extended to the rear. That's not true, sir, because some of the variances before you are in fact to the residential permission, the residential zoning category for non-residential uses. So those variances are appropriately before you. So all in all, sir, it is in fact an existing use. Aspects of it are being legalized. It's an extension at the back that is elegantly designed and fully supported by City of Toronto staff. And it's gonna allow this treasure, sir, to be put back into amazing use, not just in this city, sir, as a whole, but frankly, in this community. And we really hope that the Committee of Adjustment will approve it today and allow it to move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, okay. Members, any question? Mr. Khan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I would like to ask a very short question, and I'll appreciate very short answers. This building, which is a heritage building or declared heritage building, will be renovating and putting up two additional uh, heights. Now, this extra height has been addressed by Mr. Harrington as a great concern. Building department will pick it up definitely. But my concern is, is it a stack building or there is a gap between the, this building and the adjoining buildings? Mr. Brown Scale. It's uh, Valdemar Nickel from NOR Architects. Uh, I'll speak very briefly on the matter. Okay. Uh, the existing building is uh, uh, 16 meters and there is no gap. It's simply an addition to the east elevation of that. Uh, so it is a continuation of the existing building. If that was your question. 
Thank you, sir. And my next question is, since you will be raising three stories, now, would you at that time caution the adjoining buildings to meet the extra snow load, wind load, or the safety of their structure? Oh, ab absolutely, sir. With, with respect, I'd like to just answer that question. We started this process one year ago, uh, over. Uh, we've actually had, uh, just a correction to community members' uh, comments, we've had likely uh, five, four or five public meetings. And we've also met with city building department, engineering department, likely four times. We've also met with planning department uh, multiple times. Uh, we have had all of these discussions in regards to snow and wind load and updraft. And as I even said, even sound attenuation is a very key sound, is a very key component in a theater that operates in a quiet space. So yes, sir, we have met with uh, engineering professionals at the city and all appropriate uh, department zoning. We have even met with the chief building official, I believe three or four times to talk about technical matters like this. So yes, it certainly meets all of those issues and they have all been designed uh, to that uh, uh, caliber. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Nichols, thank you. But my concern is, Variance number 10. If I may bring to your kind attention, the building penetrates into angular plan. Now, how would you resolve this particular thing? So if I can, uh, is sorry, you're referring to, um, if I can just get uh, the variance. number 10 variance on the screen so that we're clear number on 10. it. Number 10. Number 10. Uh, 45 degree angular plane. Yes, sir. This is a nuance. If uh, staff, if we can go to plans and uh, if we can scroll down, please. This is truly a nuance uh, which we have had determination from zoning and building uh, on. It's the next, uh, I believe, if you keep going down, sir. So if you continue downwards. Yes, this is this is this is the uh, variance number ten. So what the law states is the forty-five degree angular plane would actually transect the existing building in half or even further. So what we've tried to do, and and you can see this, it it is a um, a difficult housekeeping variance to make because. This is the determination. The uh, yellow is what's being varied, uh, and that 45 degree angular plane is how zoning reads it. So the way the intent of the zoning bylaw should be is it's taken at the property line on Hadley, and that it, that it would give you that 45 degree angular plane from the public realm, from the street. We have done our best efforts as you can see at the uh, east end of the page of Hadley, to slope the roofs to meet it as much as possible. The difficulty is, of course, this is a rehearsal space and a loading, interior loading facility. So we cannot take it to 45 degrees. But we've illustrated the angles and the pitched sloped roof at the back. And so, um, but there is no issue with snow load or with uh, uh, other drainage matters or structurally uh, of that nature. Okay, thank you, thank you. Did, did that answer the, the question appropriately or do I, can I expand? You're okay, Mr. Khan? No, sir, let, let him go, I would like to listen, sure. Are there other... Do you, do um, do you need more? Are there other questions pertaining to that? My other question is about, about variance number nine. Your area is extensively larger than the required. How do you justify it? I mean, uh, is it linked to the FSI or, or how it is uh, so much? So when we number nine uh, is again, 
uh, it speaks to the floor space index and a place of assembly. Uh, so th we have to remember this is an existing facility. And so by nature, we are already exceeding that uh, GFA. Um, and I can give you the exact metric if you give me a moment here. And uh, so it is, it, it is a small delta where the FSI is increased. <clears throat> and and I would also this also ties back to the residential zone, place of assembly, and the legal lawful non-conforming use uh, standing that it, it carries. Okay. And th through through you, Mr. Chair, is Mr. Bronskill for Mr. Khan. If staff yes. just if staff could put up that, the presentation again, and I just wanted to show you three slides, Mr. Khan, through you, Mr. Chair. Page three, if it's helpful of that of that package, that one with the sorry back up from the survey, perfect. So, Mr. Khan, you can see there part of the confusion and complication on this site is you've got split zoning. So there's a commercial zone line and a residential zone line. And so there's a permitted height within the commercial zone of 23.5, but as Mr. Nickel noted to you, the angular plane is actually measured from the edge of that commercial line. And that's why you saw, saw it go through, frankly, the existing building. So it, this is what makes it complicated. That's where you then see the height permission of nine meters in the residential. If staff could then just go down um, two, uh, sorry, three slides, page six, there's a colored, blue um, uh, plan, and I just want to show. So again, Mr. Khan, you'd ask about snow load and adjacencies. You can see that the existing building on Mount Pleasant, it sort of has the existing type of tight commercial space that you would see there today. There is a story being added on top. We would absolutely have to deal with snow load on those adjacent uses uh, as part of the building permit process, but that's that existing condition. When you come to the rear, you actually see that we're not directly abutting any other existing buildings. There's an undersized laneway to the north, just as an example, uh, but we don't have the, the immediate adjacencies there. And that's where the sloped roof portion of the addition occurs. If staff could go down one more slide uh, for me, it'd be helpful. Thank you so much. Um, that also then shows Mr. Khan there. You can see again that existing relationships. And sorry, one more. Apologies to staff had been the last one that I just wanted to show you. In blue, then, Mr. Khan, you can see the existing building profile, and it actually extends past that existing zoning line to the east into the residential, that blue line. And so it's the piece on the back, that, that's the new addition with the sloped roofs. That's what's triggering some of the variances for the existing, including, for example, the existing zero side yard setback to the north, uh, and things like that. It's ex triggering that uh, angular plane as you saw it, but that's where the addition is, just there at the rear with those sloped provisions, uh, sloped uh, roofs. Um, I, I hope that's helpful just so you can understand why some of the variances Mr. Nickel went through do have a technical aspect to them. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other question from the other members? Okay, Ms. Tarodi. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, um, I would like to ask the applicant to to just uh, clarify that it, uh, this application, as far as I remember, was before this committee uh, on May 25th, like it was application number 33. Is that correct? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I don't remember the number. And it was deferred because of um, the uh, an issue with posting notice and the uh, the language um, in the notice did not include uh, 45 uh, this section of the planning act referencing the legal lawful non-conforming use so we, it was uh, we were missing a three mr chair we were it was there and we were missing a variance 100 percent okay all right Correct. thank you yeah okay so so the, yeah he was he was here before yeah okay so uh, any other question? If not, we may have to make a decision. Yeah. 
Mr. Chair, another question is that um, we, we got an explanation that related site plan approval application is under is currently under review. Is that decision affect um, the committee of decision or are these decisions separately or I just would like to know from I'm, I'm sorry because I we have so we have an explanation that this uh, a related site plan approval application 23110086 NNY 15SA is currently under review. So my question is that um, because this application is under review, is that review completely separate procedures than what we are doing, making a decision? So our, our decision making doesn't affect that review. So just want to get clarification. I guess the uh, Mr. Uh, Second, I think the, uh, the the decision we make then is for the number of variances. Any other uh, any other review is for supervisory separate, isn't it? Through you, Mr. Chair, the maybe the agent can also answer. But if there is a, a concurrent site plan, that is that is not within um, the committee's jurisdiction. Mr. Chair, I can jump in as Mr. Bronskill if you'd like. I, I through you, I agree with that answer. Um, I would add one thing to it with just two nuances. So I guess I'm adding two things. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, one is that um, ultimately the site plan will implement the zoning. Yeah. And so a decision on the variances, the site plan application would have to then reflect the zoning bylaw and any variances to it. So um, you're, you're not making a decision on the site plan, but the site plan would have to reflect any decision you make. And that will be a decision ultimately made by City of Toronto staff through their site plan approval process with conditions of approval. The second thing, just very quickly, Mr. Chair, is there is a there is in the planning staff report the one way that you would potentially be influencing that is a request for a condition that building height be developed in accordance with the north, south, and east elevation drawings. We accept that condition. We think because it does bind it to what's in front of you today. So in some limited respect, a positive decision with that condition would be influencing the site plan because we, we would obviously have to implement the elevations in accordance with that condition. Yeah, yeah, okay. East, South elevation. That was, uh, that condition was, uh, was shown in a report of May, May 17. That, um, Correct. That was before the first hearing, Mr. Yeah. Chair. You're one hundred percent right. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's that's condition. So the staff did uh, did look at it, and that's the condition they put. So, so uh, as far as the the um, the uh, the uh, uh, what Mr. Khan was was talking about the uh, thing was already was already taken into consideration as far as the as the uh, the the. the uh, uh, you know the, that uh, light that is going up. So, uh, so the question of of the uh, uh, the um, snow and all that stuff that was mentioned obviously was taken into consideration when they saw it. So, anyways, what's the uh, any other question? Okay, so we have only the three of you. Any, uh, if there is no other question, maybe I can I can uh, entertain a motion.
say something. Okay, can I have a motion there, please? Yes or no? Yes or nay? Yeah, Mr. Khan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. It's not an <laughs> easy decision to take for or against, but I'm taking staff recommendation into consideration of my decision, and I, I'm coaching what the condition they have. They are saying that the building height be developed in accordance with the north, south, and east elevation drawings yes. attached to this report. Okay. Therefore, I move this application be approved with forestry conditions. Okay. So you, what you're saying is you 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 you, uh, you forward the motion to approve the application subject to forestry and subject to the staff recommendation yes. about about developing it according to north, east, south, and elevation drawing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? We don't. We don't have a second. So, um, is there any? Can I have another motion then? Mr. Yeah, Mr. Hunt, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have listened to both sides uh, of this discussion. I sat in the hearing when this was before the committee before, and I am more confused today with the, the seeming uh, polarized positions uh, uh, about what is taking place, what implications are going it's going to have on the neighborhood. And in my heart of hearts, I would I would prefer with uh, everyone's indulgence to defer this again until there can be some kind of compromise meeting of the minds uh, between the opponents and the proponents. Um, I would like to see that happen rather than to uh, move a motion to refuse. Um, so I would ask that uh, I'm prepared to put through a motion to defer this again to allow the the uh, interested parties to try and come to some conclusion that is less uh, polarized than it appears to me to be here today okay you when you say you'd like to see it i need a motion is that your motion okay well all right well then i will move a motion to defer this to give the proponents and the neighborhood the opportunity to further discuss what appears to me to be very divergent uh, views of the proposal. Okay, uh, do you have a second? Can I have a second? So, um, I, I'll second it, but I also would like to add uh, a comment that I'm pro renovation and also I'm pro keeping the theater and expanding for such a uh, great neighborhood. I, I I think it was a great proposal, but as uh, Mr. Hunt mentioned, I um, I I go I second the motion to defer it so that they have more time to just um, maybe have a better communication with the staff. Or I know staff uh, just have one condition they reviewed, and even this time we get the same report dated May 17th and also another email that they are still on the same um, comment, but I prefer to refer it um, and second that motion. Okay, yeah, we uh, you second the motion and then it will have to come back with anything. Now, 
generally, we hate to defer an application when we spend so much time doing it, especially for the second time. But in this case, mm -hmm. Mr. Hunt had the right uh, idea, you second it, and we shouldn't put any conditions into it. They'll come back and see what happened. So we have a set we, we have a motion to defer, sign a die, and the reason is to go like Mr. Hunt explained, and uh, and and you seconding it. All in favor? All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan is opposing, and and the uh, the motion passed to uh, defer the application sunny die, and uh, hopefully you can come back with some resolution. Yeah, yeah, I think we deserve a break. We're going to take a break of 10 minutes. I'm sorry?
Ladies and gentlemen, we are we'll resuming our session, and then we are into application number 23, which is uh, which is six Park Lane Circle, application 23. And here we have Anthony Kornick. Anthony Kornick, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, can you please state your name and address for the system? Uh, my name is Anthony Gornick, and I reside at 405 The Kingsway. Thank you. So we have here, this is a, um, is a new dwelling. Uh, we have on file lots of documentation from April and May, uh, 10 variances. Staff report is asking to refuse variance number six, and they have a condition for, the, uh, for regarding number four. Uh, TRCA and transportation both have no objections. For is three, there is condition. And we have some letters from May as far as the objections. So could you please, may I see, there is nobody else here recorded. Uh, no, 33, oh no, they are. Anthony Cormick, no. There is no other, yeah. Yeah, we don't. We have nobody except you, so could you please make your presentation? And, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll move on to the decision because there is nobody else recorded here to speak. Okay, so our original application submission was heard on May the 11th and this was deferred. Subsequently, we modified our application, reducing the request for a minor variance for the front yard parking spaces from six down to four. The request for four parking spaces is consistent with our approval from 2016 at this property by the previous owners. At the hearing on May the 11th, there were two neighbors that voiced concerns and opposed the submission at that time. Subsequently, a meeting was organized with three neighbors and three neighbors attended. And based on the meeting and my explanation at that meeting, we now have no opposition before our submission today. Please note that no letters of opposition are on file as you noted before. I am aware of the current memo submitted by the planning department and their concerns with front yard parking spaces. I'm also aware of the memo from Forestry with parking spaces and also related to the front yard auxiliary structure. In our research for the preparation of our design work for this project, we respectfully submit that our application generally consistent with the neighboring properties and more importantly with past committee decisions in the area. On file, I have an aerial study illustrating this. Of note, and as you noted, transportation and TRCA have endorsed our application. And if okay, uh, I'll be available to answer any questions uh, the members have. Thank you. And uh, any question? Uh, Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to the applicant, I'm just wondering, uh, you referenced the, uh, the planning report, um, which has uh, suggested that refusing variant six, which deals with front yard parking. You're now proposing to reduce it from six to four. So I'd like to have your comments on that. Together with the um, the urban forestry tree protection and plan review. Uh, and I'm assuming you've seen all of the reports that uh, are uh, part of this application. They've suggested to de deny variance five, front yard gate booth and variance six, the f uh, well, and they also say variance six, the parking. So could you comment, com comment on how uh, you've reconciled that? Are you still there, sir? Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please answer that okay. question? Yes. So on uh, variance number six related to the parking spots, uh, we do have a, a previous decision from 2016 that actually granted the four parking spots. Um, but in doing so, I mean, we noticed that a lot of the properties up and down the street have, you know, large driveways and you know there are people that park on their front front yards and, and front uh, driveways 
what we're doing on our proposal is actually is indicating parking spots that are somewhat organized in doing so. But uh, I would say that parking on driveways on the front yard is quite common in uh, in you know prestigious areas as part as the bridle path. Uh, the ancillary structure at the front, uh, I understand forestry has a concern with uh, its uh, location. Um, we do have uh, four properties in the direct vicinity that have ancillary structure variances granted in the past. Um, specific to ours, forestry has concerns with the impact on trees, but I respectfully submit that the, the current condition of the site is that the topography is inverted from the street down towards the existing home where all the drainage is going back towards the home. Uh, we're proposing to raise the home just enough that we have positive drainage from the house, from the proposed house to the street. And this regrading and drainage, kind of reconfigure, reconfiguration of drainage patterns impacts vegetation and trees along the front yard. So. I would say that the ancillary structure is, you know, not an impactful condition as far as vegetation and trees, but more uh, the concept of regrading the site to create positive drainage. Uh, in our discussions with the neighbors, uh, specifically the neighbor to the south, he had, you know, concerns about drainage patterns and how uh, that would potentially impact his property. And in my explanation to him, uh, he was he was quite happy with what we're proposing and having the front yard drain towards the street and that is I think a little bit more kind of connected to uh, forestry comments if I may okay any any other question no uh, going back to variance number six uh, Sir, can you can you tell me, is there a permit parking on the street in the front yard parking? Are you still there? Yes, I am. So, front, is it permitted front, parking on par front yard parking permits? Does it exist on the area? Well, I'm not aware of that, but I would say I would say not. No. So, why, why do you need four parkings on one spot? Well, it's I guess to for for staff and family and the guests. The, the we're designing the the site where we have an organized kind of concept of having delineated parking spots for for friends and family. Yeah. That's really what what this is. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to uh, to find out the uh, the the the, uh, the reason behind the staff uh, uh, asking to refuse number six. So let's see what happened in the end. Any any other question? So any question? Yeah, Ms. Satarodi. No, not just a question. I just want to reconfirm that the applicant didn't um, didn't remove variance number six, correct? It didn't modify anything in this application. Just want to reconfirm. Yeah, yeah. He didn't. And then um, the transportation, we got a we got a letter from transportation that have no concern, yeah. so uh, no objection. No. The letter I'm re referring to, it's uh, dated June 15. Yeah, they have no um, I don't no objection. No. I just want to ask the applicant, is that the reason why they they believe that the variant six uh, will should should remain or is or it's just because the explanation they he provided that they wanted for extended family and friends visit? Uh, sir, did you hear the question? Uh, I have. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so our original submission from May the 11th, the transportation actually recommended deferral, and they had a few comments and concerns at that time. We modified our site plan submission, reducing the parking from six to four, 
And subsequently, I noticed now that uh, transportation is uh, in support of our application with the modifications presented. Okay. Does that answer the question, Ms. Atarodi? Okay, any other question? Hey, going once, going twice. Mr. Hunt, Ms. Satarode, Ms. Sankar, Mr. Khan, any, I need a motion to move on. There's no other speaker, that's it. Yes, Ms. Satarode. Yes. Yeah. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, since the, uh, I want to put forward, uh, uh, since the, applicant work with the transportation and reduce the parking from six to four and uh, now transportation uh, have no concern I would like to put forward the motion and I would like to accept this uh, explanation of the applicant and put forward a motion to approve this application and uh, with just one condition of city staff that the variance number four applies to the below grade portion of the dwelling and the above grade south side yard setback and the proposal is to be developed in accordance with the site plan drawing attached to this report and also subjected to transportation to um forestry 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 yes okay thank That's you yes thank you second can i have a second miss uh, sankar seconding all in favor okay thank you opposed mr hunt is opposing and uh, sir your application is approved subject to uh, the uh, subject to the condition for number four and subject to forestry thank you very much okay application number 24 which is 25 Lisburn Crescent application number 24. And here we have, uh, we have here Rick Bongers, are you there? Oh, Mr. Chairman, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, could you please state your name and address? Yeah, Rick Bongers, 75 Redwood Avenue. Thank you. So what do we have? We have here an addition, extensive uh, documentation from October again. Three uh, three variances. Staff report refused variance number three. Really are set back. And forestry has conditions. Okay, so did you see the staff report they're asking to refuse variance number three? Yes. Okay, so could you please make your presentation? Yes, in my... Sure. Uh... The stock report is considering the rear yard as the extension, uh, the property that's adjoining the side garage addition. That's what they're considering as rear yard. And this home is unique uh, in Lisburn in that it is a corner lot. Uh, it is not an inside lot like the, most of the properties on Lisburn, mm -hmm. where the front wall of the house, uh, fronts onto Lisburn, the back wall represents the rear yard. In this case, the wider part of the property being a corner lot, uh, fronts onto Lisburn. That's where the garage doors are, the front door is where the mail goes. I feel that the wall opposite the front door and the garage door to be actually the rear wall of the home and the rear of the property. Uh, you know, if the homeowners ask the children to go out and play in the backyard, they don't go over to the property portion of the property beside the garage on the side of the home. But um, planning's position is that the rear yard is actually the space 
next to the garage, which when you look at the home from the street, you I think most people would consider that, you know, the side yard of the, of the home, not the rear yard. Okay. Because it's a corner lot. All right, so any uh, any other comment? Um, just a quick question. Would it be possible that, uh, that we see city staff report on the screen? Because I couldn't yes. find it in my package. Oh. Okay. Yeah, she's right. It's not on the package yet. It's, uh, I believe it's on the second page. Second page? Can you project it on the screen, yeah? Through you, Mr. Chair, we're currently pulling up the staff report. Huh? We're currently pulling up Perfect. the staff report. Okay, yeah, they're trying to pull it up. Thank so, you. And think of any other question, if you have any. The only question is that uh, to you, Mr. Chair, regarding variance number one and two, is this addition on top of the existing? Um, in terms of the length, in terms of the length. Yes, the uh, we are proposing a side uh, single gr uh, garage extension on the side, along with living space uh, above. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the staff report's currently on the screen. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Do you see it? I can't read this too far from me. No, it's... Okay. Okay. Now we have uh, we have another person uh, waiting to to speak. Right? Is she is she on? Uh, Shirley. Uh... Yeah, is she on Shirley. Okay. Yeah. Could you could you my name is... could you please hold on your questions until we get to Shirley? Shirley Kahan. My name you... is Shirley Kahan. I live at twenty three Lisburn Crescent. Thank you. And my property. Is directly uh, abutting this property. Okay. And I don't know who Rick Bongars is because Rick Bongars is not the owner of this property. It's Brian Young. No, listen. So, the, yeah, this is an agent. Could you just tell us what's your concern about the, uh, the expense? Okay, I'm going to be repeating. I'm going to go over it. So uh, I have submitted a, a report from Larkin Plan Use own, uh, Planners that the, uh, your staff can put up, please. A letter from submitted of objection by land a lot in land use planners okay so tell us what your objection is okay i have okay in this second story addition a two-story side addition and a single story rear addition which substantially increases the usability of the present bungalow on an irregular angled corner lot plan the larkin planners submitted a letter of objection and refers to the bylaw 5569213 and its relevant chapters, which really, uh, uh, which uh, looks at the length, it represents a variance of 3.32. The depth represents a variance of 2.95 meters, and the rear setback represents a variance of 4.06 meters from all existing bylaw standards. In terms of its legislative context, the uh, Larkin planners assessed its appropriateness of relief from zoning bylaw standards by looking at the four tests. The City of Toronto official plan was looked at. The conclusion was 
The proposed design presents a disproportionate in massing and scale of the of the building compared to neighboring properties. Therefore, the proposed variances do not conform to the official plan. With respect to zoning bylaw, the conclusion was the design presents a disproportionate in massing and scale of the building compared compared to neighboring properties. With respect, respect to being minor in nature, the conclusion was the proposed scale of the new structure is a, a, with regards to the shape of the lot, the new structure will be significantly closer to neighboring properties to south and west of 25 Lisbeth Crescent, resulting in a reduction of required setback and invasion of privacy. With report to its appropriateness, I just skimmed through some of them. It's not desirable for the development of this land. Inappropriate in context of the neighborhood, the proposed scale is massing in design of the building, not contemporary to the existing neighborhood, and it's an anomaly. There are lots of other things, reasons given there that you can look at the report. In submitting this variance, this applicant, in my opinion, has demonstrated a total disregard for the Committee of Adjustments and the Council's reason for refusal of the first variance request submitted in November. Instead, he has come back with increased variances, variance issues. As a Lisbon press, a resident of 48 years and during my term as chair of the Ward Advisory Committee to Councillor, among many of the major issues that were raised and discussed with the city engineers and residents was flooding in the ward and at Lisbon. I believe the councillor has also written a letter of objection. Okay. My concerns are the position, dimensions, height, density, bulk and width of this large scale build in relation to this irregular angled corner lot, its closest to neighboring properties is extremely concerning. The changes to the existing old foundation could impact soil stability, integrity, soil erosion, blocking and filling of drainage rail swale. In also, the existing ground table is going to be affected. Storm water surf subsurfaces are going to be affected, which will result in draining issues. The closeness of this large-scale build to neighboring properties increases the potential for serious structural damages to abutting properties. At the turn on Lisbon, close to 25 Lisbon, the area has water collection. A, a, a councillor staff, which I had contacted, because we have surface ponding of storm water and snow melts that occur at the sewers and the catch basin in Lisbon. The lack of spacing and openness of this large two-story build. One of them is for, along the entire length of my abutting property line, which will ob obstruct and feed views and of outlook, result in loss of privacy. Sunlight, loss of sunlight will cause shadowing and loss airspace. So what is with this huge property there and the, the, the large, uh, the height and the width of the roof, there will be problems with windstorms. Okay, Miss uh, no, no Kamekar, I'd like you to summarize. Yes, please, I understand. Please. I understand, I understand okay. but I have issues with respect to need to be addressed, addressed as best of. And absolutely no soft scape in this area because it is compacted with huge uh, uh, okay, uh, with the maples. Uh, in maples. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. We, yeah, you passed your time. And we have other people to speak. Let's see if there is any question for you. Uh, do you have any question for this uh, speaker? No? Okay, so, uh, members, do you, uh, could you, uh, um, Mr. Bonkers, could you please come back and explain the, um, the, the concern of this uh, lady here who spoke now? Yes. Uh, in discussions with the homeowners, uh, in discussions with the neighbor and in out of respect for the concerns for privacy and safety issues and stormwater issues, which are outlined in the letter from Councillor Shelley Carroll, we removed the rear yard or back wall uh, sunroom extension. So that was initially, from what I understand, the concern of a rainwater runoff, privacy and safety issues, we removed that existing sun or the proposed sunroom extension, and all we're, all we have now as part of this revised proposal is the existing smaller sunroom in the back of the home. Now, from what I understand from the homeowners, if that is still an issue, 
they are willing to even remove that rear ground floor sunroom uh, to move things along. But the revised plans were meant to address both the concerns of the neighbor and the concerns of the local councillor in her letter. So you said if it's, uh, you can make some change. Are you making any changes to this uh, application here to satisfy the, uh, the concerns? Or are you just making a comment? Well, it, well, we have we have revised the updated drawings for you today. Have been revised to remove the proposed sunroom extension on the back of the home, which okay. is part of the initial proposal. Okay, all right. So that that doesn't apply anymore. We're not we're not doing a sunroom extension on the back of the home. Okay. The existing ground floor sunroom will remain as is. Okay, thank you. Any. Uh, okay. Thanks. Any question for this uh, gentleman? No? Okay. Can I have a motion then, please? Who wants to make a motion? Ms. Sankar, please go ahead. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, you know, I've listened to, um, you know, the concerns of the area resident, and I just believe that uh, what the uh, the agent has said here, it, it resonates with me. I understand the explanations he's provided. And, you know, as such, I'm, I'm willing to um, accept this application and I will put forward to a motion to approve this application. I'm going to make it subject to forestry. Um, and that's it. That's Thank it. you. Thank you. Second, Mr. Hunt seconding. All in favor? Okay, opposed? Ms. Atarod is opposing. And uh, Mr. Rick Pongers, your application is approved, subject to forestry. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Application number 25, which is 65 Empress Avenue. Application number 25, and here we have... 25, we have here uh, Gobi Mahalinga or Alex Mohabat. So, which one is there? Owner architect, he said. Which one? Uh, yeah, this is Gobi Mahalinga. Okay. And the, uh, your address, please. My address is 65 Empress Avenue. Thank you. So, we have here is a new dwelling. This was deferred in, uh, in November. We have uh, three uh, uh, three variances, forestry, and uh, we have three letters of support. I counted three, maybe more. So anyways, um, members, do we need the presentation here? Uh, could you please? Uh... Okay, now I see you. Uh, do we need the presentation here? No, okay. Uh, sir, we don't uh, we don't need the presentation. Do you want to add anything before we move to the decision? Um, no. No, thank you. Okay. Members. I'm I'm willing to present. Okay, thank you, M members. Any uh, can I have a motion then? Through Mr. Hunt. Oh. Mr. Hunt, please go ahead. Yes, I had, I have a question, Mr. Chair. Oh, I, I just well, wanted to clarify. Okay, so let's let's. I just wanted. Yeah, let's go over. <laughs> let's go over again. We asked you if there, okay. there is a thing. You said you, you said no. Now we have a question. So let's give them a chance to talk, uh, Mr. Uh, okay. So uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mellingham, could you please make your short presentation, and uh, as to the merits of this application? So we'll uh, so we'll see if there's any question. Sure. If the staff member could um, put up my presentation, that'd be great. So, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman of the committee and respected committee members. I'm here in front of you, uh, virtually, regarding the four variances that we are requesting and uh, why we are requesting them. So I've lived, um, see if we could uh, go to the next page, that'd be great. Um, so I've lived in this community for over 30 years and about 19 years at this house. 
Um, we are active in the community. I went to school in this community. Our kids go to school in the community. And we love this neighborhood. Uh, the new house is being planned for a family of four, plus my mom, who is a senior citizen. Uh, if we could uh, move to slide number four, that'd be great. So when we initially submitted the application, uh, there were seven variances in total, but with various uh, revisions, uh, we managed to bring it down to uh, four, uh, of which uh, two are uh, setback variances. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, we're planning this house uh, with the notion of living in it for a long time. Considering the varying age group of the occupants, um, we're planning to build it in a way so we could live in the same house uh, safely, independently, and comfortably as we age. Therefore, we had to consider various uh, future accessibility issues as well. So uh, also we consulted with our neighbors, and obtained letter of approval from all our immediate neighbors. Uh, that's our neighbors to the left, uh, right, front, and back. And above all, no letters of uh, objection from any of the neighbors or the counselor that we are aware of. Um, we are aware of the forestry report conditions, uh, one and two, and that's about it. Um, we are not seeking to set any new precedent here either. The requested variances um, have been granted before. I've listed it in the summary below and, list, um, and the details in the appendix section. Um, so uh, slide number six, please. So we believe uh, what we are asking uh, is not much uh, with, uh, with the requested variances. Uh, they are minor in nature and have been granted before. Desirable, uh, fit into the character of the neighborhood and maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaws. And with that, um, I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, there was also a staff report submitted for this application. There was what? There, Number one, huh? Eh? Staff will be showing the staff report on the screen shortly. Okay. Uh, could you could you could you put it on, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, members, there is a staff report is on the uh, screen, and is asking for a condition. So could you please take that into uh, account for in your decision? Thank you. <clears throat> So can I have a motion then, please? Ms. Sankar? Yeah, thank you. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I've looked at uh, all of the materials, heard what uh, the member, uh, the agent has had to say, and you know, I'm in agreement to align this along with um, the experts, and that is staff. So I'll put forward a motion to approve uh, this application, but I will make it subject to the June 12 staff report in that variance number one be modified to 32%. And I'll make this also subject to forestry. forestry. Thank you. Great. Uh, second, Ms. Tarodi. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Unanimously approved, subject to the condition of the staff report and, and uh, forestry. Okay, number 26. Application number 26, which is 42 Glen Allen. Application number 26, and here we have Mr. Peter Higgins. Are you there? Hello, Mr. Chairman. This is Peter Higgins of Peter Higgins Architect Incorporated, 69 Douglas Drive in Toronto. Mary for Walter to Bob two. Thank you. Uh, we have here um, we have here a few more people, a couple more people to speak, and um, and this one here is a, a new dwelling, four variances, four is three, and we have couple a uh, couple of objections. So could you please 
uh, give your presentation five minutes and we'll listen to the other people. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm representing Ian and Teresa Milligan and their blended family of nine children. Um, we have sent out to the neighbors, hand delivered to the neighbors, 15 packages uh, explaining the variances and uh, colored drawings so that we, they can understand what we're asking for. Um, my clients have a valid building permit uh, dated January 10th, 2023, and they are presently building the foundations and have put up some of the, uh, the joists on the main floor and some of the steel posts uh, for the second floor, but have not gone further and certainly have not gone into the area at the rear of the house where we're asking for uh, a variance. Now, could I ask staff to put up what I would call my colored drawings that are colored site plan and colored elevations showing the trees, etc. cetera. Um, if you can carry, just go to the side elevations, please. And if you can bear with me to give me a few extra seconds. Sec okay, there is a different set of drawings that show colored elevations, which clearly show the, uh, the privacy that the surrounding uh, 20, plus foot tall hedges give to the, uh, there we go, thank you, uh, to the uh, proposal. Now, the uh, number one, I'd like to eliminate variance number three, although it was just a few landscape steps on the side of the house, I think we can quite easily uh, remove that with no problem. Um, there have been emails back and forth uh, discussing property lines, retaining walls, uh, fences, topography, and established grade. Uh, a number of the neighbors, and including the Lawrence Park Residents Association, are not fully understanding what we're doing. Uh, if we could please go to the front facade with the colored trees on the side. Um, and the... the the Lawrence Park Residents Association makes a comment such as there's a two meter drop which shouldn't from the front to the back of the property which shouldn't create a hardship or difficult conditions. Well, in fact, that's what it does. It very much uh, causes a problem and you can see here on the rear facade, we have a raised deck that is one step down from the house. We've lowered the house to a point where it's lower than the original house that was here uh, that was demolished. And we can't go any lower. Uh, our building permit actually was for a, um, a main floor of 1.3 meters lower than what we're suggesting here and what is being built. And the reason for that is they hit water, huge amount of water uh, in the, uh, the northeast section of the excavation. So we have a raised uh, terrace or deck that is required to give some uh, close at hand uh, area for the my clients and owners to uh, entertain and also to barbecue and eat dinner with their children. Um, it's all on, if we can go back to the, please, to the uh, site plan, it's all on the west side of the house. So it doesn't affect any of the east neighbors who are the ones that seem to be objecting. You can blow that up and see that the uh, the deck is to the left. Just come come down a little bit, please. Uh, with stairs in the middle, and then there's a walkout from the basement. And all of the uh, eastern side is a planter. So it doesn't affect any of the east neighbors. The trees that we're showing there are accurate from the uh, not only site measurements and photographs that the committee would have on file, but also my own measuring and the surveyor's measuring. So the West neighbors, particularly to the left, have no objection to any of the variances requested. This drawing also shows very clearly and simply that we would like to fill in two corners of the Northeast and Northwest parts of the building. Uh, the two-story portion of the building fully uh, works within existing coverage and um, side grade setbacks and length. We are allowed a, a small portion in the middle that is a one story bump out to the allowable depth of 19 meters. All we'd like to do is fill in the two corners with a uh, two meter by um, about 4.3 meter wide uh, areas for the main floor for a better layout for this large family. 
And um, when there is, I'm going a little bit back and forth here, but the discussions about the raised deck are all about the drop in the grade of 2.2 meters from the front entrance to the back. You can't have a deck off the back that won't be in very um, violation because you're only allowed 2.5 meters, which is only eight feet. You can't sit if a family of uh, 11 at a table. Okay, Mr. Higgins, Mr. Higgins, we'll come back to you because you, you exceeded your five Thank minutes. You. We'll come back to you, okay? Um, so we have here uh, Mr. Uh, Lotz uh, Fulgraf, are you there? Hello? Yeah, Mr. Fulgraf, could you please state your name and address for the system here? Sure. Uh, my name is Lutz Fulgraf. I'm speaking for the Lawrence Park Ratepayers Association at 3219 Young Street, Toronto. Thank you. So tell us what's your concern about this application. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much uh, for giving me the time to uh, support the neighbors. Uh, Mr. Higgins was right. I was probably a little bit confused about the plans, but so seem to have been some other plans. I do appreciate that the variance number three has now been eliminated um, uh, because that is one that I did not quite understand with a zero uh, side yard uh, to, to the lot line. Um, the, we, we generally support construction in our neighborhood that supports the character of it. Uh, we also support variances if they are required uh, but variances are exceptions to the bylaws, which uh, should be granted if bylaws create a hardship for the owners because of size, shape, slope, or other uh, facts of the lot. And I hear what Mr. Higgins is saying about the, the slope of the lot, which is, which is two meters on a almost standard sized lot. So it shouldn't really be a big hardship. And of course you can put a deck on the ground. It doesn't have to be at the, uh, as a walkout without any stairs uh, attached to it. Um, the uh, application form states that the five variances are required because of the topography of the lot. Uh, and again, I just don't quite understand why the variances are necessary uh, to create the, uh, a home that, is, uh, that, that deals with these anomalities uh, of the topography. Uh, I just don't understand. It's not, there are other lots that have uh, that kind of slope, uh, maybe more, and they do not have a problem to put uh, the deck on the ground, uh, even if you have to maybe go down a couple of steps. Um, the committee is aware that the rear deck is, is sticking out further than uh, at an elevated level. Um, the desired height of the building exceeds the bylaw. Uh, it's 10.8 meters, where 10 meters are allowed. The side yard on this uh, extra wide lot uh, is still relatively narrow, even though the stairs are now eliminated. And the building length is uh, 19 meters, where 17 meters are allowed. Um, I, I respect the committee's time and I don't really want to go over all the issues that I've already mentioned or that my colleague has mentioned in the, uh, in the letter of objection from LPRA. If you have any questions, we can certainly go into the details. Uh, but maybe the, uh, the, the applicant can clarify for me what the difficult topography uh, is on this lot that needs uh, a house that uh, is certainly oversized and excessive in massing because it's too high, too wide, and too long. Um, and should the committee accept these variances and accept the plans, then uh, I would please uh, uh, ask that it be done in a way that these topography, or sorry, the level of the lot uh, should not be changed because uh, some of the neighbors there do have some concerns that that will be done and uh, that usually has an impact on their lots, which uh, uh, which we would also not like to see. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think I could leave it at that. I, I have mentioned all the other things in, in detail. If you have any questions to any of the variances, 
uh, I'm happy to respond to the questions, but I'm mindful of your time, so I will not use all of mine. Thank you. Uh, any question for uh, this gentleman? No. Okay. We'll we'll get the we'll get the um, the agent uh, later on to respond. We still have one one more uh, speaker, Maria Atanasuli. Are you there? Musi Maria. Hi, my name is Maria Tanasulis. I'm on the telephone. Thank you. Could you please tell us what's your concern about this application? Yes, so my address is 44 Glen Allen Road. Um, I sit to the east of uh, this property. And um, in general, I support development. I just, I would like to sort of confirm certain statements that are always made on this specific file. It is a project that is under construction. And to correct Mr. Higgins, the um, shell of, of the extension that's being asked for today has been built. Um, so, um, and also uh, family members that he's disclosing have moved out and have gotten married. So it's in terms of discussing openness and, and being transparent here. And um, so, and, and we, I understand that these individuals um, have built several homes in the community um, and, um, and, and as they should and, and enjoy them, but they're mainly done for resale purposes. So I, I just want to make sure that the scale of home um, that's approved is 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 acceptable to the neighbors and the effects that it have don't have negative effects on the other properties and their resale values my main concern that mr higgins just uh, said in his presentation is that he said that the project was lowered by 1.3 meters and again i i'd like to confirm those numbers we've received multiple drawings and numbers have changed and so um, I, I like to look at facts and be able to confirm these things. I have not seen the change of 1.3 meters, so if he could forward that after, that would be great. Um, and other than that, I, I um, again, I support development, but correct development. And if it has negative effects on neighbors, I hope that the committee and the chair look at those and make the appropriate conclusions. Um, and also, if there's a staff report, I just wanted to ask if that's something that gets distributed or posted on the city website. Okay. That's it. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Any question for this uh, speaker? No. Okay, Mr. Higgins, could you come back here, please? And um, Thank uh, you. number one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, number one, there are five variances, not four, right? There are five. However, okay. we've removed number three. So move number we're two. back to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I originally said four, but there are five, and you removed yeah. number three. Okay. So uh, could you please answer those questions, those concerns of the public here? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, uh, the LPRA speaker mentioned topography. Why does this create variances? Please, could the staff bring up the colored drawings again that we had up earlier? Uh, specifically the side elevation and the uh, the rear elevation. Thank you very much. So here's the rear, and you can see the grade. It does drop down. This is a low point in Lawrence Park. The, the deck is higher than the allowable 1.2 meters because it has to be. There is no other way to get out of the house. The present, or the, the house that was formerly on the property that is now demolished, had a higher main floor, and it had a deck whose area was larger than what we're proposing, that was higher than what we're proposing, and it was on the east side affecting the neighbors who uh, seem to be doing the objecting. We have placed the deck on the west side, or to the right of this drawing, where the neighbor to the west has a very thick coniferous screen, and they are not bothered by what we're proposing. Now, the present or excuse me, the house that was demolished had 13 steps down from the main floor to the backyard. We have nine steps now because we've lowered the house from the previous house's main floor. Um, Maria, uh, who is the neighbor to the east next door at number 44, uh, she's she mentioned the 1.3 meters. I want to clarify that, that our building permit application, which started the build, uh, had the main floor 1.3 meters lower than what we are proposing here, which is under construction. 
The reason why we had to raise it back up was because of the water, which I mentioned earlier. So the reason why we have a roof height variance is because of the water. There is no side yard variance to the, to the walls, which means that we have a properly sized house. It's only the top of the roof. And remember, this is a fully hipped roof. The only variance is in the middle of the roof. It has no impact on the neighbors because the eaves are where they're supposed to be. They're allowed to be at that level. The top part is where the variance is. We don't have side uh, dormers facing the neighbors. We don't have a fire escape balcony from the third floor overlooking the easterly neighbors who are concerned or Maria's pool. We put that on the west side. That neighbor has no issues. If you could go to the front elevation, please. Um, and the topography that the LPRA speaker mentioned, uh, there's huge confusion about, and if you blow this up a little bit, please, uh, about what is it called and understood to be established grade. Well, established grade is measured from basically one inch onto the east neighbor's property and one inch onto the west neighbor's property. That creates established grade. We don't create it. That's a zoning issue. It's been accepted by the zoning examiner and by the building department vis-a-vis -vis the permit that was received. The um, This shows here that we've, it, it's hard to tell, but we have lowered the grade quite considerably in order to try to get the house down, but we can't lower it any further because the water table level. Um, uh, Maria's house is shown there to the right side. She has a pool and a beautiful planter with 20 plus foot tall hornbeam trees. And she's concerned about overshadowing. I just don't see how the overshadowing would be an issue when we don't have a side yard setback variance. We don't have a wall height variance. We don't have dormers or gables on uh, her side. We only have three small dormers, very small dormers facing to the street to give some character and to give some windows to the extra bedrooms and bathroom on the third floor. The third floor, as per, if you could go to the site plan, please, is only a small portion of the, the overall part of the house. You can see it there in the front in gray. And that wasn't part of the original plan, but is now uh, before you. And, and because, again, of the water level and having to raise the house back up uh, to a level which allowed the basement to work without being in underwater, we have ended up with a, a height variant. So topography does play into this in that the rear deck, the reason why there's a variance is because, number one, uh, 2.5 meters or 8 feet isn't big enough to sit on and we are above the 1.2 meters because there's a 2.2 meter drop from the middle of the house to the back. Okay, Mr. So Mr. you can Higgins, see you've got lots of... Mr. Higgins, you're coming well, to I'm the not end. Well, I'm not quite at my five minutes, sir. Uh, can you... Yeah, let's see if there's any, any questions. Do you, do you want to summarize here? I, I would like to state that even as of today, one hour ago, I was on the email trail with Maria next door to the east where she is asking questions and simply not believing that the same surveyor, uh, Accent Pillar, who is well known for most architects in the center of the city, who did the survey for our property as well as her own with spot elevations on some of the um, properties to the north of Maria, She's not believing, it seems, and I'm not going to put words in her mouth, but we keep going back and forth where she questions grades. And it seems like the other neighbors who are to the north of her, who have written letters of opposition, as well as the LPRA, don't understand okay. the grades. Okay. We are not... Sir, I ask you to summarize, okay? So, so let's see if there's any questions here. Uh, you talk a lot about Maria, okay? You have a discussion with her. Let's see what, if the members have any questions. Any question to this gentleman about the uh, variances? Ms. Sankar. Yeah, just a question about um, what... If, sorry, I had I was started capturing um, some of the modifications. Um, is, is there anything that... I mean, can he just repeat if there were and what they were? We eliminated number three, Please. which was a side stair. Which, which simply allowed one to walk from the driveway to the side of the house. And although it hit the, the adjacent uh, property, 
it it was made going to be made of landscape stones and it was not necessarily so necessary three, so we eliminated was removed and yes. nothing else right that's all i wanted to know is what what were the modifications yeah. just number three was removed yeah number three was removed but i i haven't been able to say one thing that i think is important and that is re with respect to the height um if you could please pull up the uh front facade one more time staff i think this is important because maria has been um, talking about her concern about the size of the house and the, the variance, et cetera. And again, I've noted, if you can blow this up just a little bit, I've noted that the variance is right in the center of the house. It's not at the edges. There are no dormers or gables, but we are prepared to lower the easterly part of the roof by 30 centimeters and that would continue all the way around to the back of the house and all the way around the, um, the west side with the exception of the portion that would remain at 10.8 meters. So that is variance up. number two you're saying is also going to be modified, but it what would it be modified too? Because right now it's saying proposed height is 10.8 meters. What would it be saying? It would be saying 10.8 meters for the westerly half of the roof where there are two dormers and the remainder of the roof already is lowered to 10.5 and you can see that on the drawings of the side two side elevations and the rear it's lower but because the portion above the garage is closest to maria's property we'd be willing to reduce the height of the roof by 30 centimeters for okay. that portion. That's what I'm calling the east. I think I portion. got it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Higgins, uh, when you say we're prepared to do it, we're not negotiating it. Could you tell us exactly what you're changing to which variance so we can uh, decide on that one? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, I'm not trying to negotiate here. I know that that's not something that we ever do. Just tell us I'm trying to clarify. Well, sir, I'm trying to clarify, and I, I mentioned that to the, the panel member just now, that the variance would remain at 10.8. However, the easterly half of the roof facing the street and facing number 44 would be reduced to match the remainder of the roof, which is shown as 10.5 meters, okay. all the way around the other parts. Okay, so that will be reduced to what, to 10, 10 point what? 0.5. Five. Okay. And it, it does show on the drawings as 10.5 for the remainder of the house. So okay. we're, we're, we're hearing Maria's concerns. Uh, we respectfully don't understand that. anything else, but we're, offering this to help her because her pool is next door. So, um, yeah, the, the staff here is saying that 10.5 is not changing anything. Mr. Chair, sorry, I just want to clarify. Variance two is not actually changing. It's staying at 10.8. Is that correct, Mr. Higgins? That is correct, but if, if if the staff and the committee can look at the drawings, you can see that the rest of the roof doesn't have the same amount of variance. We need the 10.8 to make the third floor spaces work. However, we can take the easterly portion and have a seven foot ceiling in the third floor and give an extra foot of height on the easterly part of the roof. So yeah. So how ca how can we how can we uh, uh, clarify it in the in the uh, in the variance? What do we change the variance to? You would leave the variance at ten point eight, but in the same way that you have uh, allowed variances where you have a side yard setback of like say one point two, but the rest of the house is at one point eight. You state it as such, and I know that you would have a plan and a site plan. Here, I don't have that because this has come about with negotiations uh, and questioning from Maria today. So I am offering 
and are willing to have the roof height lowered on the easterly half of the front of the house. So you take the front facade and it's the area above the garage and above the second floor windows where there's a single dormer. We would lower that area to match the rest of the height. So therefore the 10.8 meter variance would only occur on about 25% of the roof. Okay, it'll be changed to 10.5, okay. So what is the thing to do on this application? How do, how do we make a decision based on that, on that, uh, huh? nothing? Uh, huh? Honestly, if, if, you, if you could bring up. Mr. Chair, I'm ready for a motion. No, 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 before the motion, please. The other people have to understand it too. The staff have any question regarding this change? Please go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Chair, through you, I don't think it's fair the members should make this amendment, extra wording, if they don't see it in front of them at this point. As I understand it, the 10.8 is not changing, but there is a portion of it that will be 10.5. However, to articulate it into the condition is difficult and unfair to the members now if they don't see it. If there is some way Mr. Higgins can produce it in writing so the members can review it just for their benefit before they would consider it, that would be helpful. I do have a comment. Yeah, if he wants to accommodate the neighbor with any small change, it's fine. I think I think he probably we have an variance in front of us. If we make a decision on this one, then uh, then it should be okay. If 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 the members decide. So what's your uh, what's your comment, Miss? Uh, my comment is I, I do agree with uh, the Deputy Secretary Treasurer that it is uh, difficult to do this, but like any agreement that neighbors make with the agent, it will be to the agent to honor that, and this is video recorded, That's so right. that if we do indeed uh, accept the number two, which is at 10.8 meters, there's no stopping him from making that better Fine, for the sake of the neighbor for a specific portion of the roof as per his private agreement. We cannot sit here and uphold private agreements, um, but in light of the fact that this is recorded, um, you know, uh, I, I would think and I would hope that Mr. Higgins would want to honor that. And I think he has done that in other instances in the past. So, um, if everyone doesn't have anything else to say, well, I'm, I'm ready for a motion. Make, make a motion, and and as I said, we decide on what has been done here because the change is very convoluted. So let's make a decision on what we have here. So what's your what's your what's your motion is? Just a quick question. Yeah. Another quick question from Mr. Higgins: Is there any elevation that we can tie to? Because you said this already exists that explain the wording that you would like us to put in the decision. Thank you, uh, Ms. Atarabi West. Uh, well, I'm prepared to, if you would allow this to be stood down for 15 minutes, and I would mark up the drawings that I have pro provided you to show you where the change would be. And then that would be very clear to you where, where the change is. Is that possible? No, we're in the middle of the uh, decision here, uh, submitting us a, a plan and look at it. Uh, you're talking about deferring the application. So here we have a, a no. Okay, we have no, no. I'm not. Okay, so we have a so we can't we can't stop the the the, the clock and wait for a plan to come in. So we have here a variance here, five variances changed to four when to number three was removed, and we'll make a decision on that. And like the member and the staff said, if you have want to honor what you decided with Mr. with the neighbor, it's fine as long as you make it better, not more. So, so, so let's uh, let let's see what the mem let's see what members are saying. Do, can I have a motion on what's submitted here?
Mr. Taro, yeah, be, be, go ahead, please. I'm waiting for you. Mr. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear you call yeah. my name, sir, yeah, yeah. so I don't go know. Ahead, please, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. So, um, I, and, and to get to Ms. Atarodi West's uh, comments, um, no, there isn't a site plan to tie this to, um, according to Mr. Higgins, but hearing uh, what the agent has had to say, as well as um, what the surrounding neighbors have had to say, I mean, I'm leaning on the side that I think that the agent does have some fair points about why uh, this home is contributing uh, to the types of variances that they do have. And I think that he has tried to go out of his way to work with the neighbours as such. And so I think he has done to the best of his ability an application that seems to try to be sensitive uh, to everyone around it and to the natural structure of, of, of this application. So with that in mind, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application. Um, with the change that he is made here today by variance number three being removed, it will also be subject to forestry. And there is no site plan uh, to uh, tie this to, but I'm hoping that with variance number two, that it is honored that, uh, you know, for a specific easterly portion of um, that height, the structure facing the street, that it will be reduced to 10.5 uh, meters, but I'm going to leave variance two as is and allow you to work that out privately. So my motion is to approve removal of uh, with variance number three removed and subject to forestry. That's Thank you. It. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tarodi, are you seconding it? Second, Mr. Tarodi. Yes. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, sir, your application is approved. Subject to removal of number three and subject to forestry. That is as is. If you make any 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 change, that's fine, as long as it's less, not uh, more. Okay. I understand, Mr. Chairman. Thank you and the committee and your patience to allow me to explain all of this. And Spe especially at five o'clock. <laughs> okay. Members, do we need a break? Yeah? Yeah, okay, everybody nodding. Okay, let's make a five to ten minutes break.
27. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're resuming our session. And uh, this one is lake number 27. It's uh, 11, Stradgaon and Crescent, application number 27. And here we have the, the agent is crossed out here. Huh? Imran is the one, eh? Okay. Yeah, the agent is not here, but we have Imran Latif. Is the owner? Are you are you are you online, Mr. Latif? Nothing, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Could you please? Yes. Oh. Uh... Okay. So, could you please state your name and address for us, please? So my name is Imran Latif, and my address is 11 Strat Cavan Crescent. Thank you. So we have here is a new dwelling. It was deferred in uh, in. Uh, way last year we have six variances and forestry a couple uh, letters of objections and new old ones and we have support also so could you please make a, a short presentation because we have somebody else to speak here so we can uh, yes. we can have them uh, address their concern so please go ahead we have five minutes Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, at our last hearing, our application was deferred as planning staff uh, had not reviewed our revised plans. Uh, this time, planning staff confirmed over email that since we obtained a new zoning certificate and they have no objection to the variances, uh, no staff report will be issued. Uh, we also took this time to address our neighbors' concerns and all but uh, one have dropped their opposition. Now, let me go over our application by placing it in the neighborhood context. Uh, if city staff could please uh, bring up uh, my cover letter and the uh, maps at the end of my cover letter. If they could just zoom in on map A. Yes. So map A shows around 400 lots in our immediate vicinity. Now, only 14 of these lots are under 5,000 square foot, like our lot. Uh, that just highlights that small, irregular sized lots are the exception, not the norm in the area. And if I could just refer back to the previous presenter who, who uh, presented for 42 Glen Allen Road, uh, that's a house that's just east of our house. And uh, there, just east of our house is where lot coverage applies versus FSI. If FSI had applied to their project, their FSI would actually be higher than our house. So if I were to take their house, shrink it to our small lot, their variances would actually be higher than, than what we're requesting. But uh, coming back to this map, uh, if, we zoom, if we go to map B, uh, if we just scroll lower, so, uh, this is, uh, shows the close-up of our area and where we have these smaller lots. And you'll see that uh, the FSI in general is a lot higher in these pockets and our FSI variance is in line with what's been built in the past. Now, uh, uh, specifically with our proposal, uh, we've been working with our neighbors since last summer to refine our design and uh, to minimize uh, its visual impact. Uh, we accomplished this by lowering our main floor, so now it's just above grade. This allowed us to reduce overall height by two and a half feet. Uh, we combined this with increasing the width of the building. Uh, this has resulted in a more proportioned structure as opposed to a tall and skinny three-story house, three house the bylaws would have allowed for. Now, lastly, we took our neighbor's suggestion and incorporated dormers for our front windows. So now the house gradually steps back to its final height. The end result is a house that fits in well with the other houses in the area and doesn't tower above its neighbors. Now, within this time frame, I also wanted to pass it to my wife because she had a prepared statement that she wanted to say. So if you could state your name and address. Ah, uh, yes. Hi, my name is Winnie Latif. Uh, my address is 11 Strathgowan, Crescent. Um, the proposed house is for uh, our family of four, uh, my parents and our living nanny. Um, our son is currently attending to school across the street and is in JK. 
And our daughter is one and a half and will attend the school in the future. Um, our parents are a big part of our success, and we would not be able to build this house without their financial support. Um, now that their health is failing, it is our turn to take care of them. Uh, my mom has completely lost her eyesight recently due to glaucoma and has rheumatoid arthritis and needs significant ass assistance with daily life. My father um, is a kidney transplant recipient and diabetic and is unable to take care of her uh, on his own. Therefore, we had decided to build this house where we can all live together. With the help of our live-in nanny, we can take good care of our parents as they age. In addition to our live-in nanny who has been with us since my son was born almost five years ago, uh, we welcomed her 16-year-old daughter to live with us, and she has been with us for over a year now. Uh, she came from the Philippines. Our nanny is truly part of our family, and we hope that her daughter can continue her schooling in the neighborhood to give her the best chance of success in Canada. If the city is focused on increasing density, our project would be the perfect example of that. Uh, we feel that we, that we, we plan to have three families under one roof, and separate, which separately would have required three residences. Um, so we hope you um, can consider our, our application. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're very good. You went almost uh, five minutes, two of you. So uh, we'll be back to you because we have somebody else to speak here, okay? We'll be right back. And, and we have here um, Edward Resetnik. Are you there? Or Anne Carroll? Hello, oh, can you hear me? Yeah, could you please state your name and address? Yes, uh, my name is Edward Brzezetnik, and I'm the homeowner of Nine Strap Gallon Crescent. Thank you. And I'm here along with my wife. Okay, so please tell us what's your concern about this application. Okay, um, we are, I'll say, we are in opposition of the revised FSI variance of 65.9% as it is still significantly higher than the zoning permitted uh, FSI of 35% and significantly impacts our property. Um, we, had, um, we have not seen that uh, email. We like to see that email from the staff if they did agree to the 65.9%, but uh, we have not seen that. So I can't comment to that, that point. Uh, maybe later on you guys can show us that. Um, but just to talk about our, our property, the, the new proposed structure, um, their first floor extends eight foot, eight inches beyond the back of our first floor and 24 feet, eight inches from the back of our second floor on the north side. Um, the second floor of the house, which is the most impactful to us, um, has, even with their new proposed two foot three by 11 foot four cutout, still extends significantly beyond our second floor on the north side between 19 feet and 22 feet of our house and the second floor um, still extends past the the first floor of our house uh, by three foot uh, ten. Uh, we are not opposed to a new structure being built but we are but we have consistently uh, expressed that we think the second floor should not extend back so far as to create a large wall appearance in our backyard. And there is no reason to have to set a new FSI precedent on the street or the area as this second story could be reduced as it is a new build. Um, the, 11, uh, the seven strap gallon crescent, a fairly new build uh, for the street um, was set at 65%, uh, which was the present setting for the area. And we think that the proposed structure at 11th Strathgowan could be curtailed to be at or below the 65% and not pushing up to the 65.9. Um, we'd like to also point out that that lot uh, that had 65% uh, was on a 20% smaller lot than the proposed uh, 11th Strathgowan. Um, as opposed to the uh, comparable addresses, uh, I know they, they stated the one at 36 Glengowan, was, which is on the corner of Mount Pleasant, which is a four-lane road, which is significantly different from our street and location of, of the Strathgowan Crescent. The uh, 69 Strathgowan Avenue mentioned, uh, that they mentioned is on the other side of the ravine and is not part of Lawrence Park. 
And then there was a 99 and a 101 Glengowan Road, which were built, uh, homes were built back in the 1930s and are two and a half story buildings with the um, floor space in the attic. So it doesn't, uh, has no overall impact on the exterior size and mass of the buildings. So in summary, we have already expressed that we are not opposed to a new structure being built by the new homeowners. Um, however, in general, as this is a new build, we think that a new structure proposed should be built in concordance with the lot size and surrounding homes. If a larger structure is desired, then a larger lot should have been purchased. Um, if the second floor could be brought back on our side, uh, so not to extend past our first floor, that would greatly reduce the impact to our property and should bring the FSI back to 65.0%. I want to thank the committee for your consideration and, and time to allow us to express our concerns. Thank you. Um, any question for this uh, speaker? No? Okay, so we'll get back the uh, agent to uh, answer those questions or the owner. So, um, yes. Yeah, Mr. Okay, Mr. Latif, could you please uh, uh, address those concerns? Yes, uh, the main concern that the neighbors have is not as much to FSI. It's uh, related to the rear of our house extending past uh, their rear uh, because they proposed higher FSIs in the past as well, as long as we cut off a big chunk of the second floor. Uh, so to that, I'd like to add that uh, the lots, our lots are part of a pie-shaped parcel of land as you move northwards, the lots keep getting deeper. So our lot is five feet deeper than our south neighbor. Similarly, our north neighbor's lot is five foot deeper than ours. A consequence of that is that the houses extend further into the rear as you move northwards. So for example, our north neighbor's house extends even further into the rear than our proposal. With the lots layouts as they are, it is natural that houses extend further rearwards as you move north. I would also like to highlight that we have no rear yard setback variance for our proposal and that the second floor of our house ends five feet before the rear yard setback. Uh, that's been done to accommodate our neighbor. Uh, we've been working with them since last year and we've made several concessions, including uh, reducing our height, uh, which we have no variance for, use of dormers at the front, installing privacy glass along the sides that face them and reducing our FSI and building length. Uh, for this last request, we are unable to accommodate because it would significantly compromise our bedrooms and delay our project. And if you were to look at our bedroom layout on the second floor, you would see that our bedrooms are not large to begin with. And if we cut more, then we have to draw people who can live and make use of this house. So I would again like to highlight that the existing bylaws allow for a much taller and deeper structure. Then would have which would have a more detrimental impact on our neighbors concerns okay okay thank you i'll see if um, any questions for this uh, speaker no can i have a motion then please motion going once going twice Okay, Miss uh, Miss uh, Miss Sankar first. Okay, I was Miss Sankar. Yeah, I, I was uh, trying to see give my colleagues the chance to uh, do so if they wanted. Um, you know, I've heard what the neighbors have said, but I I do believe that the explanations provided by um, you know, the agent, uh, the owner, um, does sit well with me. Um, I I don't feel that I have an issue with this. I do believe that it does meet the fourth one. And so I'll put forward a motion to approve uh, this application. I'm going to make it uh, subject to forestry. And, and that's, it. that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Tarodi, seconding? Yeah. And all in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Sir, your application is unanimously approved, subject to forestry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Application number 28, which is 4190 Bathurst Street. Application number 28. And here we have 
David Bronskill. Mr. Bronskill, are you are you there? Sure. Um, it's nice to spend the day with you. Yeah, we, uh, David Bronskill. <laughs> I can see. I can see that. Okay. All right. So we don't. Uh, you 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 all have all done more work than me. But for the record, sir, David Bronskill, Goodman's LLP, three 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 Bay Street, Suite thirty four hundred, Toronto, Ontario. Thank you. Appearing as agent for the applicant. Thank you. Okay, so we have here uh, like the. Um, this is uh, stacked uh, townhouses. It was deferred in February. Twenty five variances. Oh yeah. Transportation. As for deferral, and uh, forestry and councillor supports the project. Okay. Yeah, we have the councillor who supports the project, and um, and we have twenty five variances. So please go ahead, and make your presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you do know. Thank you for noting the positive letter from the councillor. Um, other than transportation staff, it also has full support of other uh, city departments. And I'll deal with the transportation, the, the most recent transportation memo in a moment. Um, thank you for staff for putting up that site plan. And I'm just going to hint to them that I'm also going to go to the presentation document, the seven page PDF at some point too with them. Um, you can see on that site plan, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, block one is what's being added. It's 12 stacked townhouse units. They are proposed as rental units. There's an existing nine story rental building you can see there in yellow uh, on the property today. It is being treated as one property. Um, so it's an infill by the owner and it would remain the owner and it would be part of the rental housing that exists on the site today through these 12 additional units. That is what frankly has triggered the 25 variances in front of you because the existing apartment building today has certain aspects of it that don't meet the existing zoning. Bicycle maintenance facilities, bicycle parking space requirements, loading uh, parking, accessible parking, parking space dimensions, waste and recycling, amenity space, drive aisle width. There's a whole series of those variances, sir, that it's hard for me to go through in the five minutes that frankly just relate to the existing apartment building. But they have been noted in the letter uh, prepared by the Goldberg Group and uh, submitted in support. What we have tried to do through this process is where possible actually make improvements on the site. As one example, there is no loading space at all today. You'll note that, that there's a variance indicating that a type G loading space is required. We are not proposing a type G, but instead what we have done through this application is add a type C at the northwest portion of the site, as well as some garbage receptacles um, at the south end of the site to enable pickup at the south end of the site. And I'll show that to you in the presentation in a moment. The other variances then relate to the 12 townhouse rental units. Um, they, they, some of these, frankly, for the panel, relate to the fact that the way the site is laid out, um, the, the rear yard variance uh, is is on your left hand side and so um, some of the variances get turned around when we actually have them in front of you so th they would require a rear yard variance of 7.5 but we're proposing 1.54 but that's because the rear yard is actually on the left hand or west side of your screen but what we're actually setting up there is not a rear yard but a side yard for those townhouse units and 1.54 as you well know is a fairly standard side yard setback in that area and there are a series of variances like that that frankly are very technical related to um, these new townhouse units if staff are able to find that seven page presentation just very quickly because i'd like to show you what it's going to look like uh, there's also a color landscape plant thank you very much that's it that's the front or on the south side of the street on almore avenue um, so all of the 12 uh, uh, new rental units in this stack townhouse product uh, actually have street entrances and come in off Almore. You've then got um, in this three-story building, uh, um, 
one unit sits at grade and part of the second floor. The second unit is stacked above. It takes part of the second floor and the third floor. And then the units have rear, uh, sorry, um, rooftop terraces. So you do see a small pop out just over the top of the third story roof there uh, that is limited just to provide access to screened rooftop terraces for each of the units. If staff could go to the next page with thanks. You can see then the color uh, landscaping plan up in the top left, you can see where there's a storage area that's been added for bulk receptacle materials. And that's where the type C loading space would be added. So that's something that would be used by both the townhouses, but also the existing apartment building to improve the situation. And then if staff can look just at the south side, Mr. Chair, I'll finish up very quickly. You can see in that gray area down there, what we're these are um, new garbage um, storage facilities or bins that are frankly amazing and quite technical. They're called Moloch bins um, and they would sit on a poured concrete pad. There is no such um, storage area today. So this is an improvement and that's where the garbage pickup would occur as part of this. I'm at my five minutes, Mr. Chair. I'll stop there in terms of an overall explanation, but I'm happy to answer some questions for you uh, and respond to any of the speakers who may follow. Thank you. Your five minutes is exact. Thanks. Okay, now we have here, I have one, two, three, four, five people registered, but apparently some of them we couldn't reach. Could you please tell me what the situation is, uh, staff? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we were unable to reach Paul Seedman. Who? Paul? Yeah, okay. The other two registered speakers are currently present. They are available, yeah? So we have those two, but you added two more, right, Andrew? The other two registered speakers that were added later are the owners, registered owners. Andrew and uh, Matthew, their owners? That is correct. Okay, so... Um, so we'll have to go to the, uh, yeah, well, the, uh, the agent already spoke for the owners. So let's see. Okay, so the next one is uh, Mark uh, Schwartzman, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, could you please state your name and address, please? Sure, my name is Mark Schwartzman. I live at 15 Danby Avenue in North York. Thank you. Uh, and uh, our residence is basically right behind the proposed okay. uh, townhouses. So tell us, please, what's your, so, what's your concern? So we have a number of concerns. First is the number of variances. I mean, are they really minor? 25 variances. That's quite a bit of difference. Um, then also the proposed height of the townhouses. They will basically tower. Ex we have a pool in the house. They will tower right above our backyard, uh, blocking, uh, creating shadowing, and blocking our uh, enjoyment of uh, the views of uh, trees and parks, which are in the area. Um, there's also the issue of uh, parking. Basically, the town, the, the proposed townhouses are being built on existing um, guests' parking. There is already a concrete uh, platform there, and they're proposing to build those townhouses. Where is the, the, there is a lot of congestion on our streets to begin with. So they're just adding more towns, townhouses and that is a serious concern in terms of traffic because the streets are small. These are side streets off Bathurst, both Elmore and Danby. Uh, where are people going to park? There is no guest parking for the building. And this is quite a large building. Then they're also proposing more rental units, but they own two buildings that are right in the vicinity of the house, 4190 and 4222. Both of them have many units for rent. So they are not fully occupied. Why are we adding more townhomes, which are probably going to be more expensive than the apartments, when they cannot fill out their existing units? Um, then, of course, you know, I mean, we'll have to address 
the dust that construction will create, uh, both uh, for the filters of our pool. We will not be able to use our pool because of um, the height of the new building. And uh, of course, you know, the, the basically right above the backyard looking in, uh, there's a privacy uh, concern. Um, this is basically my point. So the, the, there is a lot of issues that we feel that uh, I don't know yeah, how necessary is it really to build when we haven't filled out what, what, what exists. Okay. Uh, are, you, are you through, yeah? Yes. Okay. Uh, members, any question for this uh, gentleman? Okay. So we'll go to the next one, who is Randy Elkind. Are you there? Randy Elkind. Uh, yeah. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me, Mr. Yes. Chairman? Yes. Yes. Could you please state your name and address for the system? Yes. My name is Randy Elkind. I am owner at 26 Elmore Avenue. Okay, and tell us what's your concern, please. So there are several concerns. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members for your time. Uh, in general, I always do support development, but not development that will impact the traffic and parking density um, in our neighborhood and in particular on our street, Elmore. Uh, we already deal with a congestion and overflow of parking from the apartment building at 4190 uh, that occurs on our street that runs about six to eight houses west on Elmore on a daily and nightly basis. Uh, while police do ticket uh, as you're not allowed to park on our street overnight, we do, I believe, need our police for more important issues other than uh, parking, uh, uh, sorry, ticketing uh, cars that are illegally parked. Um, and to note, um, we see that many of the variances that uh, 4190 uh, currently have um, as neighbors, we see many of these um, uh, variances, parking being one of them, congestion during traffic, uh, morning and evening being another. Um, I do want to further just talk about the character of our street. We are a single family uh, residential uh, street on Elmore where our lot sizes are anywhere from 36 uh, or 33 feet to uh, 70 feet with about 50 being the norm. They essentially want to put 12, 900 square foot apartments uh, uh, apartment, a uh, small building on Elmore um, in an existing surface parking lot, which A, is not in keeping at all with the character of our street and will devalue our homes, I believe. And further, it will only increase an already challenging problem we have with respect to density and traffic. Finally, in the last meeting, the developer's agent made a commitment to the committee to reach out to the neighbors. Um, I was not contacted at all um, in the interim between the last um, time they were in front of this committee. And I actually was on the, uh, was the neighbor um, on the call last February who requested and receive the commitment from the committee uh, that we would be contacted. So those are my issues. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, just to uh, just a comment. Uh, we always encourage the applicants to go to the neighbors and talk to them. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have a uh, a rule that said, or a bylaw or a requirements that they have to talk to you. But uh, as I said, we encourage them, and hopefully they'll come and talk to people. So, uh, any question for this uh, speaker? No? Okay. So now the next one, next one is um, Paul Simon is not there, huh? So that's it. Andrew and Matthew are, are the owners, right? Okay. So Mr. Uh, Bronxville, Mr. Bronxville, uh, we had Mr. Here, Chair. Yeah, we had here uh, Andrew uh, ten, ten years, and uh, Matthew uh, Sesta, are they, they're the owners, so you're speaking for them, is that correct? 
That is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, so let's see. So can you please address the concerns you just heard about these two speakers? I can, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm going to try and go a little bit in backwards order from my notes. In terms of consultation, Mr. Chair, my recollection last time is that we had indicated we would reach out to those for whom we had contact information. The problem is, for the last speaker, um, I think I'd indicated that people should be reaching out to us if we didn't have a letter on file because we don't have their contact info to be able to do that. My client did email with Mr. Schwartzman because we had his letter on the record um, uh, to respond to his letter and encouraging him to reach out to them if he needed further clarification. They did not hear back from him to my knowledge. Uh, that's not a criticism. It's just we did what we could with the information available to us after that last committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of parking, sir, there are 12 parking spaces for these units in the underground garage. Um, and there is a letter from Lee Consulting indicating that the parking supply for both the existing building and the townhouses um, is sufficient for uh, the, the overall project. I would just note for the committee's benefit, this uh, site actually now falls within area B of the new parking zoning bylaw, which has overall reduced parking requirements. There is a parking variance for visitors, but that's because we simply just have not identified separate parking within the underground for residents versus visitors. Uh, visitors can park anywhere, so there are no dedicated spaces. And, and because they're not dedicated for visitors, that's why it uh, shows up as a variance. In the package in front of you, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to highlight a few things for Mr. Schwartzman because I'm still, I am concerned that he may not fully appreciate what's being proposed. Um, if staff could go forward uh, to page five, we did a section um, that's before you. We're underneath a 45 degree angular plane. There are not height variances. The height to the top of the pop-ups is only 13.71 meters. The height to the top of the parapet for the deck areas is 11.55 meters. Mr. Schwartzman's um, email or letter to the committee previously suggested something in the range of 25 meters for these townhouses. Um, and that's not what is being sought before you. And in fact, as you can see there on the right, it falls under a 45 degree angular plane from uh, his property. And you can see how the terraces are set back and screened. Um, we think this is an appropriate way to deal with privacy. The last two pages, we also did shadow studies, frankly, having seen his letter, and I'll just show them to the committee. Um, you can see his property with the pool, and you can see how shadows in March uh, don't reach his backyard, let alone his pool, um, uh, through the day. And the next page in the shadow studies is September, obviously similar. And as the committee well knows, June is even better. Uh, with the sun getting higher in the sky. So in the summer months when he would be using the backyard and pool, not only are there no shadows in March and September, there would clearly be no shadows in that kind of, you know, May to August period as well. Um, so we, we think actually this fits. Um, I don't have a response to his suggestion that the rental uh, market uh, is vacant. That's not correct to my understanding. Um, we, we should be building more rental housing. Um, and in terms of whether this fits in, in the character of the neighborhood, uh, this is part of a different block uh, that fronts on Bathurst. Yes, they're townhouses on the flanking street, but we've lined up the front yard setback to match the home to the west. Um, we think the 1.54 setback is appropriate. The length and, and uh, of the homes, as you can see on the shadow studies, matches the home to the west. Um, we should be having this type of alternative rental project in the city. We have a housing crisis. Um, this is exactly what we need. Um, and it's something that we hope the committee will approve here today. Okay, Mr. Thank Chair, that's my response. I'm here for any questions, of course. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that concludes the, uh, the neighbors who want to speak. And uh, members, any question for the uh, agent here? Ms. Atar, Ms. Sankar? Yeah, I, through you, Mr. Chair, I, you know, so many folks um, spoke and I was going through uh, quite um, in, in depth with the application here, but did we ever address the new uh, transports uh, comments, Mr. Chair, about, you know, their conclusions that they want this uh, matter deferred? 
and as to why. And if if we haven't done that, perhaps maybe if if the agent would be able to reiterate and comment about that. And that's the June twelfth um, transport report. Yeah, good question, uh, Mr. Bronxell. Could uh, could you address the concern of transportation? Why they ask for deferral, and and how you want to address that? I I. Yes, Mr. Chair, I can. Um, I, I'm not sure why they haven't had time to review. It's not that complicated. I don't mean that as a criticism or, or to be too glib. Um, I'm going to deal with just a few aspects of what they're maybe unclear about. One is they suggest that they need more time to look at whether the type C loading is sufficient. All I can say to the committee is the loading space is not for the townhouses. The loading space is required for the existing nine-story apartment building. And the Goldberg letter clearly outlines that there are two problems with a Type G loading space on this site. One is there's an existing underground garage. We don't; It can't structurally accommodate a Type G loading space on the site. Secondly is we would have to gut the existing building to provide it, and we would lose rental housing units. Yeah. So with respect to transportation staff, this is an improvement to the existing condition and it's what can be accommodated on the site. And Lee has provided turning radius diagrams in their study that clearly show how a type C loading uh, truck will get to the space and out of the space. Um, they indicated that they haven't had time to look at it. I, I think we could look at it in about five minutes together and conclude that providing a type C loading space where there's no existing loading for the building today that is accessible to these trucks off a side street is exactly what we should be doing. You can see there the, where the space is located. Um, I, I don't think it's hard to review um, and I think it's clearly sufficient when um, nothing exists for the existing building today. Um, the parking, um, I'm not sure why they need to have any further review. As I noted, it's now area B. Um, we actually meet the parking ratio under the new bylaws. As I noted, the six visitor spaces is frankly, um, we've identified them on the, on the plan where they would be. But as I've noted, because they are not dedicated, the variance is required. Uh, I'm not sure there's anything else that we need to look at in terms of um, further review of parking. And the last thing I would simply say to the committee is there is a um, um, uh, corresponding application with the city being reviewed for site plan and um, any of these matters can, can be implemented there. But in terms of the sufficiency, I think it's very clear on the record that everything uh, is sufficient um, and a deferral is not warranted that would further delay much needed rental housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the majority of the parkings you said are inside, right? inside the uh, it is it's the underground garage mr okay. chair correct underground. okay all right so any other question mr khan uh, <clears throat> thank you mr chair um my question to mr bronski is this very simple sir how many parking spaces city wants and how many parking spaces you are proposing and how many, uh, how, how many shortage are uh, shortage of the parking spaces, visitor as well as residential? Thank you. Um, thank you for the question, as always, and the clarity of it. Um, in terms of the residential supply, when you go through the list of variances, you will actually not see a variance on the list for residential parking supply. Right. That's because of the new zoning provisions adopted in bylaw 89-2022. Um, what is required are visitor and accessible spaces. It's very difficult in the existing parking garage now to provide the accessible spaces. So you will see a variance for that. There's supposed to be four. It's impossible to provide those. That's the new bylaw provision that requires those. There's also the requirement for six visitor spaces those are being provided in the underground garage as part of the overall pool which includes 75 parking spaces underground so the six are included within those um, and the parking justification is indicated that that 75 spaces uh, more than meets the requirements uh, for both the existing and future proposed building from a demand perspective so it's a bit technical, sir, in terms of it's really only the visitor and accessible variances that are before you. 
Um, and I hope I've, I've hope I've addressed how I think both of those variances are actually technical. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? If not, can I have a motion? Ms. Sankar, your hand is first, and the other ones did not. So please go ahead. Okay, so I, you know, I feel like we've gone through this in quite a bit of depth, and um, I, I really hate to do this because it's not it it's not anything that the neighbors have said or Mr. Bronskill, who's really gone out of his way to try to explain this. But as a member, I'm going to say that I have to rely quite a bit and weigh heavily on specific types of expertise. The parking is a concern, although Mr. Bronskill probably gets it, probably is correct, um, probably there is nothing to be concerned about. Um, I need to see that from transport to say that at least a further discussion from 10 days ago, they made this report 10 days ago, what happened and what transpired within those 10 days to this hearing that there couldn't be some kind of explanation or something that you know would show me that they have either changed it or there's discussions going on, et cetera. For that, you know, I, I hate to do this, but my motion is to defer this application, sine die, to give the applicant a chance uh, to uh, work this out with transport, because if I can't see that, my only other option is to deny. So I defer this application. That's my motion. Uh, do you have a second? Mr. Mr. Khan, are you seconding it? Okay. Uh, all in favor? I second it. Okay, all in favor? Yeah, all in favor. Mr. Tarodi, your hand, okay? Op okay, opposed? Mr. Uh, Khan, Mr. Hunt is opposing. Okay, Mr. Bronskill, the, uh, is it sunny day, Ms. Uh, Sankar? Sign a die, and um, to uh, the co the uh, the um, reason is to uh, go to the transport and 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 R and D question. Okay, Mr. Bromscale. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chair, is there any chance of a fixed date so that transportation staff actually respond to us? No. So their their memo is dated mm -hmm. on the twelfth. We responded on the fourteenth. Unfortunately, it's the twenty second. Mr. Bromscale. It's I'm just. Unfortunately, this committee cannot decide what time is coming. You have to work with the staff to make sure what when it can come back. We cannot decide. We, Could, have, we don't have the information as to the applications. So you no, I, I understand, Mr. Chair. I'm not. I'm not asking to revisit the deferral. I'm just. Could, could at least be. Could at least we have a statement from the committee on the record that it's expected that transportation staff will respond in a timely fashion? Because they've had our letter now for eight days in response to their. We responded in two days to their memo, and they have not responded in eight days to our memo. Again, I and they are now holding up 12 units of affordable, of, of rental housing in the city. So there'd be something just in the minutes that it's expected transportation staff will respond quickly. Again, I, I hate to do this to you because especially in this case where the, uh, this was deferred in February already. And- uh, I understand. And, 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 the, uh, and the place is on, on Bathurst and the, the council supports it. But, uh, but when we decide First of all, when we discuss application to this extent, I hate to see it deferred because we uh, we already spent the time and it has to come back. However, I understand, Mr. Chair. However, if this is the the case, we we cannot, unfortunately, we cannot make any decision or a, a pressure as to when they will respond and when the application will come back. You'll have to work with them and the staff uh, to get to get the the time timing when it's coming back so i understand mr chair okay. and i just wanted to note i'm not expressing frustration with the committee i hope i hope everybody understands that it's frustration in getting staff to respond so th that's that's why i'm jumping in perhaps inappropriately now no no you're not i i understand it i i i can see it i mean this was deferred and going on and on and and there is a pressure but uh, but we we there's only so much we can do and uh, we don't we, we can't. i understand Th thank you mr chair okay all right, so that's uh, number 28. Now we go to number 29. 29, which is uh, 
Treaty Ramsey Road, application number 29. And here we have uh, Michael Fox, are you there? Or Christine Ho? Uh, yeah, that's my wife. She's with me right now, but I'll, I'll be the one that's uh, speaking. Okay. Uh, could you please state your name and address? Yep. Uh, I'm Michael Falk, and I live at uh, 330 Rumsey Road with, uh, with Christine. Michael Falk. Okay. Now, you're the owner, and here we have Ernie Leung, agent, not registered. So are you the only one who is going to be speaking for this application? Yeah, I'm, I'm the only one that's going to be speaking. Um, Ernie's just... Okay. Yeah, Ernie, if you have any kind of technical questions, he can chime in. I don't think well, there will be, but... Okay, um, okay let's see. So you, you, you're the only one. Okay, this was deferred in April, and we have, yeah. only, we have only two variances, and there is nobody else to speak. There is no condition on nothing. Let me ask the, staff, the members, do we need any presentation here? No. Okay, sir, we don't need... Perfect. Uh, with, yes, I hear somebody's jumping. Okay, so we um, we don't need the presentation. Do you want to add something before we go to committee? Um, no. If I guess if there's no okay. kind of um, unless there's questions, I'm I'm I don't need to not present. Thank you. Two variances. Members, can uh, do I have any um, any question or motion? Mr. Khan, you had your hands first. Motion. Eh? Yes, sir. Can I make a motion, Mr. Chair? Please go ahead, unless the other ones have any question. No? Okay, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Make the motion, please. Thank you, sir. Very straightforward uh, two variances uh, application and uh, very simple, uh, minor in nature. Therefore, I move this application be approved. Thank you. Second? Second? Mr. Tarodi, all in favor? Okay, thank you. You're unanimous. Okay, sir, your application is approved and there is no conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, number 30, which is 117 Young Boulevard, application number 30. And here we have... I got Evangelista, are you there? Yes, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I'm Evangelista. I am back. Yeah, Best okay. Welcome back. So we have here, uh, the. Uh, this is a new dwelling. Uh, we have an extensive documentation from before. We have nine variances. Staff report has a number of uh, comments and applications, and the... Uh, forestry, and 10 letters of objection. Now, we have the uh, staff is asking for revisions per applicant, which you made revision to variance number 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7, and 10. So could you please, before we do anything, if you want to go over the changes, tell us what, what variance you want to change it to what you will change it to. Okay. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Also, um, I would like to add that... <clears throat> I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to receive or read through the latest uh, letters of support from the neighbors that had previously sent in letters of concern. So I'm going to add an additional variance that we have uh, modified. Perfect. That is perfect. Okay. Okay. Just, so, please go, just the number of variance and what you're changing it to. Yes, I will, Mr. Chair. Um, so in light of the meeting with um, the neighbors uh, last night and uh, 117, 119, uh, and uh, we also received a letter from uh, 40 DeVere and 44 DeVere. So what we've done is we have removed the breakfast nook at the back of the house. So let's start with number one. Number one, our new... The new variance, uh, revised variance, will, will now read 37%, not the 37.7. And that is, again, in part because we did uh, make those revisions. Okay. Um, uh, 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 just please, be, please. Okay, so number two. Before you explain anything, just number one, 37. Next, number two. Number two is 20 meters. 
Okay. Number three is good. Four is good. Five. 20. Yeah, I see they got five two times. Okay, so it would be you, you, the first number five, the building depth of, that would be 20 meters. Okay, what else? Okay, the second number five, seven, nine, one, that is correct. Six, correct. Uh, seven is correct. Number eight is correct. Number nine has been removed, and that is that. That is that's that is conclusion to the changes. So okay, now um, the, yes, only two the changes you mentioned are not in line uh -huh. with what what I have here from the uh, staff report. Number one, you you did change it. Number two, you did change it. Number five, uh -huh. you did change it. But then they say there is change to number six, seven, and ten. Right, because we did change the height. Um, we changed the height to 10.50. The height for which, which variance? Uh, just one second. So the, oh, yeah, that's correct. Hold on one second. Where is it? Um, you see number the second number five and number six, the main wall heights? So that was changed. We brought it down. Five that and was changed. Five and six, you mean in the system they're already changed? Yes. So now they're they are both seven nine one as opposed to eight three one and seven seven seven. We just made it consistent for uniformity. Okay. So uh, so let's go over it. Make sure the members know what they're what they're what they're deciding on. Number one, you change it to thirty seven. Percent. Number two, you're changing it Correct. to 20 meters. Number five, you're changing right. it to 20 meters. Number nine yes. is re number nine is removed, and that's it. Right. Okay. And then, and then, in addition to all the other changes that you have there, which uh, it, which planning staff saw, the only thing that planning staff did not was not privy to was the um, removal which is for the better, the removal of the breakfast nook at the back of the house, which they would, they would actually have welcomed that. No, this um, is the changes she want to make. Not according to that. No, not according, but that's what she want to change. The, uh, you're not following all the, um, the stuff, the stuff, that's what I'm asking you. You're not following all the stuff that said number five, six, seven, and 10, but you said, no, all you're changing is one, two, five and nine no uh mr chair i did change the depth i did change the height of the of the main walls and i and the platform encroachment into the rear yard we removed it so i i, I we did exactly what planning staff requested what's mucking everything up is that we have two number fives here i can't see it from five from five here could you make it bigger here Keep going, keep going down. Yeah. If we look at if we look at their comments, the lock coverage, we changed it. It's now 37. The building length, we reduced it. The building depth, we reduced it. The 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 main wall heights has been revised uh, on both. Revised. The platform encroachment, which is platform encroachment is the last one what, has been removed. What number are you talking about? Number nine? I, you, Mr. Chair, you, you said that I, I did not do what planning staff uh, uh, requested, but, but in actual fact, I did. I actually went beyond what planning staff requested. Well, all, all we're saying here... I removed that the numbers mm -hmm. they, they said here are not compatible with what you change it. So uh, it doesn't matter what, what the staff says, we'll see what they, uh, what they come back with, this, with the members. We have number one changed to 37%. Number two, you change it to 20 meters. 
Number five, you change it to 20 meters. And number nine, you removed it. Those are the only changes you're making. Is that correct? In addition to all the other changes that I've made previously. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, listen. One, the changes, we have, we have to know what we're deciding on. The changes, they're on the, you can see them on the system. You did not cover all the ones that are there. Look at them. Ms. Ida, Ms. can you please, yes. can you please just uh, make the changes as our staff showing the public notice in front of you? Just make the changes uh -huh. based on this public notice that you just seen. Yeah. Going if, through if, one if, by one from the if, first if you don't variances, anything? Look at, if you don't want to mention or not. Okay. If you, Ms. If Ms. you look at the, okay. Ms. Evangelista, yes. if you don't want to yes. make change, yes. it's fine. You tell us what you changed, but you're no. changing is not compatible with what they asked for. So you don't Mr. have to, but Mr. you have to tell Chair, us what with, you're doing. Mr. Chair, with the greatest of respect, with the greatest of okay. respect, well, change that the staff report that that Paul wrote is based on the changes that I submitted. That I, I modified all the variances at the corner. So let's okay. go over okay, everything let's, again. Okay, okay let's, so let's, number let's, one. Hold on and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, could I'm you, gonna use what I'm seeing. Could you please, could you please stop it? We don't want to cut you off. Uh, let's see, mm -hmm. the, let's see the staff will. Uh, we have the member. The staff will go ahead, please. We Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ida, so we have, and Mr. Chair yes. and the members, we have an issue in that the public notice lists two mm -hmm. number fives by accident. Can you see that, yes. Mr. Chair? There's two number fives that are listed by accident. Now, if we can show on the screen the previous one that lists the changes, if we mm -hmm. can bring that up, maybe this would help, Ida, if you, instead of reading the number, like variance one, two, you read the actual text of the variance that you're changing. Because we have two number fives. No problem. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, yeah, so we'll go through. Yeah, 100%. What, we'll go through what we see here. So lot coverage okay. is being reduced to 37.7. Is that correct? No, 37%. Okay. We are now. Or 37. We are now further. Sorry, okay, go ahead. We are now further reducing it to 37%. Right. Okay. Okay. The, now the proposed building length will now read. 20 meters. Okay. 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 The north side yard setback remains the same. The south yard setback remains the, the same. same. Okay. The proposed building depth will now read 20, 20 meters. Yes. The height of the front wall, west side, will now read 7.91 meters. That's the one you didn't mention, you see? Okay. Okay, and number okay. seven. Okay. Yeah. okay. The next one, the east, east is 7.91 meters. The height, 10.50 meters. Three stories remains the same, and the uh, proposed platform encroaches has been removed. Okay. So, okay. I know it's been a very long day for everybody, and I apologize. Well, but I just yeah, wanted to see, clarify that we did. Well, generally, you Could, don't have to follow exactly. Uh -huh. We'll make a decision. The question is, you're saying I did exactly what they said, and it is not. So, so now let's see what happened here. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Um, Sam yeah. just pointed out something to us. On the screen, do you see variance mm -hmm. six, which is the height of the rear main walls? Yeah. You have a maximum permitted of 7.5. The public notice went out at 7.79. So Miss Miss Vangelina wants to change it to seven point nine one, which actually makes the variance worse. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Ida, you either have to keep it or lower it. You right. either have to keep 7.77 or lower it. Okay. Oh, how am I going to do that? Yeah, you can't, you can't just change it to higher. Hold on, just bear with me for a minute, okay? Let me just take a look at what I got. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Yeah, gee, uh, Miss Evangelista, I thought you're, more, you're usually more meticulous than this. <laughs> Mr. Chair? <laughs> yeah. You know what they say? I know what they say. Every smart, every smart man has a cramp every once in a while. Yeah. Oh. But the man is not here. Yeah. Okay. So could you please just go over one by one and tell us what you're changing it to so the members will know what they're voting on? Yeah. Mr. Chair, we, we just noted all of them one by one. Maybe the only thing that we are waiting is the, is the main, height of the front, main wall, west and east. Because there is a typo mistake, or there is a different different numbers stated on public notice. Yeah. So we already wrote all of them. Yeah, yeah. So we just waiting for the proposed height of the front main wall, which on the public notice is seven point seven seven. And here's so we are waiting seven, for yeah. the number seven point nine one, which it's is only which on, is, on the west higher. side. Yeah. Yeah, it's not only on the oh. west side. Right. So if everybody, yeah. So the west side, and I'm just going to confirm because um, I believe so if you can just uh, can I just be muted for for a second so that I can just call the designer because having to defer this um, I think the neighbors are even quite anxious everybody's quite anxious okay, what, to get what, moving what on do you this. what do you want do you want to stop for a minute to, to confer with your uh, designer or? Can, can we just a very very okay. quick short break Okay, all right. She just, yeah, she's just going to stop it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe that, that's a good idea. Uh, members will have a, a short break, okay? We'll have a break. That's a good idea. Perfect.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're resuming the session. And Miss Evangelita, are you still there? I'm here. Okay. Mr. Chair, yes, I'm here. Okay, so. Okay, so. Uh, we got your... it all sorted out. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to confirm with the, with the architect. So in actual fact, um, because we can remove some of the articulation, we are going to work with the rear main east wall at 7.77 meters. That will stay at 7.77 meters. Is it 7.7? Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, 7.77. Seven, seven, okay. Seven. Okay. Okay. No, she's Can not I proceed? changing it. No. Yeah, so the very no. it remains the same. Required 7.5, and you're, uh, you're asking 7.77. Okay. That's it. Is this on the east side? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Just a quick yes. question. Yeah, yeah. East this, side. Yeah, this is the east side. A, it shows on the Thank list you. as number six. We'll just change the beds to the top of the molding. So we'll just, well, we can modify it. Yeah, yeah. Well, here we're not allowed to change the numbers, but we can change the uh, content. Okay. So any, uh, any other? Absolutely. Any other change, Ms. Evangelista? Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe we have covered uh, all the changes. Okay. All right. Okay, so please go okay. ahead. Uh, so that was even before we started the conversation. You, you, want, you want to cover your, your uh, presentation or your true? You're finished. Uh, no, I'm good. You're good. Okay, so. So I, I would like to just start, as I mentioned previously, uh, we did meet with the neighbors. Uh, the neighbors um, initially uh, had some concerns with the height of the structure and the length of the structure. Uh, what we've done is we have uh, they preferred that the structure be shorter. So, and that is why we have removed the breakfast nook at the back. So, and we're more in line um, with the neighboring properties and not as imposing. Um, the, the height, uh, we brought the height down to 10.50 and the neighbors both on either side and at the back on Devere uh, they are okay with that. For them, it was the more pressing point was the um, the okay. length of the house. Now that takes us to now. If you notice, there's a few highlights. I've highlighted um, the the side yard setbacks. Um, the side yard setbacks of 1.22 is very consistent and characteristic in this neighborhood because these are more wide and shallow lots. So that is um, very characteristic in this neighborhood. Our length, um, we have a length and a depth, and they are both um, 20 meters. Now, in actual fact, the home is not 20 meters, but because the curvature of the road, the measurement of the depth and the length have to be taken perpendicular to the road. And that's why we are requesting um, the length and the depth of 20 meters. The, the house itself is, 19.71 uh, meters and again too this is um, consistent with uh, homes in the neighborhood. So our main wall height at the front of the house you'll notice that um, there is we, we have articulation at the front of the house. Um, we're asking for which is uh, I believe the next page. Um, right okay so that takes us to and that takes us to um, why we are asking that the height of 10.50, which um, in this, again, in this neighborhood, uh, it ranges anywhere from about uh, 10.45 to 11 uh, meters. And uh, planning staff, we, we did reduce it. We had it closer to 11 meters. We reduced it to 10.5. Okay. Uh, and what we've created is in the roof line, um, you know, in the roof line of the home, uh, we've, we have what is a uh, meditation prayer yoga room uh, for the family. That is something that um, 
they they require. But so what what essentially what we've done is we've created that right in the roof line. It is indiscernible from the street. You'll see even the we've created some articulation with the dormers, but they are not they're fake dormers. It's just to that creates symmetry and balance um, to the, to the home uh, from the from the main uh, up and visually, right? So now the three stories again, will it destabilize the area with the greatest of respect? I, I don't believe so because if I'm walking on the street and I look at the home, to me, my appearance is a three uh, uh, two story home. The, the dormers on the roof line is again, very characteristic to the neighborhood <clears throat> because it does, it does add dimension and you know gives you that uh, architectural feature and just makes the home uh, much more attractive and, and gives it the balance. Uh, we have removed the encroachment. Um, our coverage uh, is now 37% because we did remove the, um, the breakfast nook at the back. Uh, I do, um, with, with respect, submit that what uh, we are proposing is very desirable and very appropriate for this particular neighborhood. Very characteristic. This is an eclectic area. We have flat roof. We have peaks. We have, um, you know, we, we do have some uh, characteristic visualization as what we've presented. And um, it is a form of intensification that does meet the four tests. It is in keeping with the purpose and intent of the official plan and zoning bylaw. And I'm open to any questions that you may have. Okay. Thank and, you. Uh, one, Thank you. One more note, Mr. Chair. You you are all aware and have received and reviewed all the letters of support now from the from the neighbors. Okay. Well, we have first of all, let's hear from the neighbors the concern they have. We have here David okay. David Johnson. Are you there? Mr. Johnson, are you there? Yeah, could you please state your name and address and tell us what's your concern about this application? My name is David Johnson, 40 yes. De Beer Gardens. Thank you. So tell us what's your concern, please. Okay, I believe uh, uh, Ida met with the neighbors on the north and south side of 117 um, Young Boulevard and then went over their concerns, which I also have some concerns. And based on those discussions, uh, Ida and the owners were able to make changes, and uh, I support those changes. So generally speaking, I support this application. However, I have a couple of questions, if I may ask. Uh, the first question is regarding minor variance uh, number seven. In the minor variance number seven, it said the proposed height of the building structure is 10.89 meters. However, in Ida's discussion that we just heard, she's talking about 10.5 meters. So I'm just wondering which, which is it? Yeah. Uh, that's the first question. The second question is regarding a minor variance number eight, regarding three stories versus two stories. All the houses in this neighborhood are two stories, that, um, but this is a request to make it designated as a three-story building. So I want to know if there's any implications for that for the rest of the neighborhood. And the uh, last one, the question that I have is regarding the um, rear deck that has been deleted. I think that's very generous and very kind. It, uh, reduces the uh, setback in the backyard. But My only question is, a year from now or two years ago, if the people want to do exactly the same on the back of the building, will it come back to Committee of Adjustments or can they just simply get a building permit to put that new deck? And in that case, um, it means that the uh, deletion of this thing is sort of moot, it doesn't mean anything. I'm not, not, not opposed to development, not at all. 
or uh, not a back deck at all, as long as it fits in with the neighborhood and allows all neighbors to enjoy their private space. So thank you very much for letting me uh, okay. speak today, and hopefully the committee will make a good judgment. Yeah, thank you. Now let's see, uh, any question for this speaker? I know, I know she changed that to 10.5, but I'll let her answer to that. And she will explain about the tree, the tree story. Okay. As far as the deck, when it's removed, we don't we we, do, we don't deal with it here. It's not here. So let's let's her explain uh, uh, the uh, the concern, and then we'll pick it up from there. So Miss uh, Miss Angelista, Evangelista, please uh, uh, answer those yes, questions. Yes. Yes. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes. Um, more more than happy to answer. And I'd like to apologize to Mr. Johnson. It just, the, the evening got away from us and it was, we didn't want to come knocking on your door at nine o'clock at night. So uh, I apologize uh, for that. Uh, we didn't want to disturb you at that time. Um, but <clears throat> so in answer, the overall height has been reduced to 10.50 meters. And that goes on record as 10.50 meters. Um, the three stories. So when we were uh, meeting with the neighbors and, you know, they wanted to know the neighbor, um, specifically Paul at 115, uh, we're trying to correlate, you know, what the height of this building is versus the height of 115. And because when you look at, you know, you want to put in a three story, um, you know, it, it can kind of be somewhat daunting. Uh, in this particular case, when um, we actually measured 115 Young Boulevard, 115 Young Boulevard main wall height will be higher than ours. Um, the, the, the roof, because this is more of a main wall and a, a shallow roof, so our roof lines will be the same. We will not be higher than 115. Um, our eaves trough will actually be below 115. So the, the three story that we're proposing, um, we were, because this is something that, you know, the family requires, um, we were very sensitive and wanted to make sure that what we were proposing wasn't going to be like an addendum or it was not going to be, you know, one straight box. That's why we created it in the roof. And there's that you know, there's a lot of sloping in the roof too. So when you walk on the street or you take a look at this house, be it from Young Boulevard or from Devere, it presents itself as a two-story home, um, not a three-story home. And it, one wouldn't even know because the dormers that are there um, that we're showing uh, right now on screen are fake. Um, it's just, again, uh, articulation on the front of the home. Um, the rear deck, the rear of the home, we removed the breakfast nook. So anything that um, is proposed, now, can they go tomorrow and turn around and build that? They've made inroads with the neighbors, right? They've, you know, they worked, they all worked together last night because everybody has to be work cohesively and live cohesively. So, you know, to turn around and then blatantly do that, you need approvals. And, and I, I really, from, from what I witnessed, I, I don't really believe that, I, I respectfully submit that I, I don't think it would be something that would be blatantly done. Um, it, you always need approvals uh, for anything that you do in the city. And um, we, and that's why we removed it because I know um, both um, Glenn, Roberta, and Paul in Milan, uh, they, they mentioned that, you know, that affects you too, the length of the, of the dwelling. And, and that's why, you know, we, the owner had absolutely no problem with removing that um, breakfast nook. So I, I believe um, I have addressed all the comments. I, I, again, respectfully submit that the home as you're seeing in front of you will not destabilize the neighborhood. It will not um, offend or be offensive to the neighborhood. It is very characteristic to uh, what you see when you walk up and down Young Boulevard. Um, One Devere Gardens has 
a three-story home too. Uh, and it, it, this is you know, very, very characteristic to um, what you see when you do walk the community. Okay, are you, that's finished, yeah? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, now, the three story, you said that the, uh, from far you don't see it, you see only two story. But in fact, mm -hmm. this three story is not, is not a technical one with the basement or any other condition. It is a three story. Mm -hmm. Now, when you said mm -hmm. on, the, on the top, there is uh, the, uh, there are only fake uh, uh, windows there. It, is the third story uh, occupied? Is it livable? Is um, uh, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chair, the third story is going to be used for a prayer meditation room, yoga room. Okay. Now the it, it has a, it has a specific use. Okay. Uh, as as you as you the reason I'm I'm bringing the question because the staff asked to refuse number eight, which is three story. You saw the staff. Um, yes, Mr. Chair, I did see the staff report, and as I mentioned, again, with the greatest of respect, because the house does present as a two-story home, and this was a conversation that we had with, um, that I had with planning, and, you know, he appreciated the fact that, you know, this does present as a two-story home, but and basically, it's for me to have the conversation with you, and um, it, for him, it was the area is not permitted for that. But I, I could again, I could understand and appreciate if the house actually from street presented itself as a three-story home. However, we've been very sensitive and gradual and made sure that it is all contained within the roof of the home. Mm -hmm. There's no. There's absolutely, we're not swaying from that. Um, as you saw, we, you know, we have worked with planning staff quite extensively. Uh, we worked with the neighbors. The neighbors didn't have, I know Mr. Johnson wanted clarification on that, but I will say this, we will not be higher than 115 mm -hmm. Young Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Our eaves trough will actually be lower than 115 Young Boulevard. So in, in, in the realm of, you know, a, a two-story and a three-story, it, it would be more characteristic that you're walking down the street and you're looking at this house and you look at the house and the house appears to be and is, you know, appears to be as a two-story. Okay. Yeah. What you're saying is like the, um, uh, you explained it, they understand it, but because it's just on the, because it's required, that's why they left it there. That's what they said to remove it. But my question to you, are there any three stories on the street? Um, one Devere Gardens has a three story. It does, yeah? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So let's see what the members have to say. Any question to uh, Ms. Evangelista? No? Can I have a motion then, please? Ms. Satarudi? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I'm ready to put forward a motion. Please go ahead. And I will go through the changes by reading the, the, the changes, the final changes. So I would like to uh, put forward a motion to approve this application with the following changes. The, the following changes will be such as the proposed lot coverage is 37 of the lot area. The second one is the proposed building length is 20 meter. And the proposed north side setback is 1.22 meter. The proposed south, south side yard setback is 1.22 meter. The proposed building depth is 20 meter. The height of the front main wall on the west side um, is eight point, no, sorry, on the east side, yeah, 
the, the, the proposed height of the front main wall west side will be 8.31. And the, the proposed height of the rain, rear main wall east side will remain the same as 7.77 meter. The variance, the proposed height of the building is, um, is 10.5 meter. And uh, the, the proposed number of story is three, remain the same. And the, uh, the platform encroachment is eliminated. Okay. The, fi the final variance. Okay, now the, uh, the 10.5 is okay, the two story is okay. But the, uh, which one you said? Uh, let's, uh, the west side, I believe. Sorry, Mr. Chair, three. The yeah. west side, I believe uh, Ida had changed it to 7.91. Correct. 7.91. Okay. 7.91. Yeah. Okay. Is the west side. That's right. The, yes. east, the east will stay the same at 7.77. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit confusing because of the numbers, but that's that's what it is. Now, we have... Uh, 7.91 is, is, yeah. on the west side. And there is... Uh, Perfect. There is uh, forestry... Um, I I will double check. Um, there is no forestry. There's no forestry. No. Okay. It said there is no forestry and there is no other condition as far as I I I know. No, no condition. There is no the there no other condition from transportation. The, no condition. No, no. Story. Uh, the uh, forestry is surfaced from April twenty-seven. Okay. Any? Uh, can I have a second, please? Mr. Hunt seconding, all in favor? Thank you, unanimous. Okay, Ms. Evangelista, unanimously approved based on those changes. You see, you made a very Thank good- Thank you very much. You made a very good presentation. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you, whatever is left of it. Yeah. Okay, uh, can I have a motion to terminate, please? Ms. Yes, the motion to terminate at 7.03 p.m. Thank you. And second, Mr. Oh, I have two seconds. Two Mr. Seconds. Hunt first. All in favor? Okay, if you don't want to finish, you can stay here. So we have the... Uh, okay, thank you. You. Uh, yeah. Thank you very Thanks much, everyone. With thank you, everyone. Yeah, with 30 applications. Thank you, thank you. I thought we'll finish at four o'clock or two or three o'clock. Yeah. Next time. Thank you. Thanks. And good evening, everyone. Bye. <laughs>